Hey, mate. How are you? Yeah, good. What are you guys That's talking about? Good. The Bible. Uh, contradictions in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah, I actually have a little bit of expertise in this area. Expertise? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I completed ministry college in 2009. Um, I was a youth pastor after that. Um, and I've studied the Bible for most of my life. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So you're, I'm assuming, a Christian. No, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a Christian anymore. What are you now? Um, uh, I'd say, I'd probably say I'm an agnostic atheist. I run a YouTube okay. channel where I talk about religion, philosophy, and science, and yeah. Mm. What about with Islam? What do you feel about Islam? Um, well, uh, I would say that, well, I've only read the Bhagavad, um, not Bhagavad Gita, sorry, I've only read the Quran once, and I wasn't yep. convinced that it had any um, any uh, validity to it at all in regards to, like, cosmological claims. Well, okay, so, like, for example, do you have any examples by any chance? Um, n- not really. I wasn't, I wasn't super convinced. Um, yeah, like, what, I'm, what, what was more convincing about it? Well, I'm of a position where I'm looking for evidence for um, to, for reasons to believe in a God, and I didn't find any within um, the Quran. But do you believe that there's a creator, or you're an atheist atheist? No. Well, no, no, no I, I'm not. When I, when I, I have to just be careful with my, my language here. I'm not convinced by any arguments that I've heard for the, the, the existence of creator, yeah. Oh, okay, so... Okay. so... So, for example, where do you... Okay, so I get you, I understand. So, basically, where do you believe the universe came from, if you don't mind me asking? Like, what, how do you think it came into existence if it came from nothing? I'm not sure. But I would, I would, put, I would put the same question back onto you with God or Allah, if you did believe in God. Yeah, I believe in God. Where did the Creator come from? Yeah. I don't believe the Creator can come from nothing. Uh, from nowhere, sorry. Because I believe it has always existed. I think existence is basically within the universe. But existence outside the universe has different laws. And for exa- and basically, we don't believe the creator had a beginning nor an end because if he was created by something else and he was created by something else and he was created... So if the creator had a creator, had a creator, had a creator, had a creator, then you have a problem of an infinite regress. And it would be the exact same thing happening with the universe. So if you said that the universe had a universe, had a universe, had a universe, had a universe, and it would be an endless stream, that would be an infinite regress, which means, which, which would be a paradox, basically, because in itself, like, how can you have something that's infinite and have mass? Like, it just, it's it's paradox, I guess, in a way, if you get what I mean. No, I, that's that's exactly part of the reason why I reject um, the, the notion of a creator. Um, like, why can't we just cut out the middleman and say the universe just always was? Uh, because we don't... Okay, so I don't believe the universe could have always been because we know that galaxies and the universe is finer. We believe that galaxies die out, stars die out, life dies out, and one day the universe will eventually go black, because will go dark, sorry, because of the simple fact mm. that it doesn't have... It's not self So basically, for example, the universe is not self-sufficient on itself. It's basically, it's dependent on something. So, for example, the Earth is dependent on the Sun. The Sun is dependent on a nebula. A nebula is dependent on the galaxy. The galaxy is dependent on a cluster of galaxies. And a cluster of galaxies is dependent on the universe. So, everything is dependent of each other. And if there's something that is dependent on each other, that means that big thing must be dependent on something else. But we say that the Creator is independent of everything. So, that is a stop in everything. So basically, that's the end or be all. I don't believe the universe can always exist, if you get what I mean. Because everything does die out anyways. So that's all I'm saying. I mean, saying. have you ever read any... I think what you're talking about, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you're kind of talking about entropy, how, like, things degrade over time, and then, like, they're all, they, they all like, are connected. Um, and everything is, like, going towards... Uh, like, everything is degrading, right? Like, nothing... Energy can't be created. It's just degrading. Right. So it's the so, great do, you, do you believe that the universe had a beginning? Uh, well, it's tricky. So I'm not an expert like in any science field, but I generally subscribe to the theory of the Big Bang Theory. But even then, doesn't that doesn't say where the universe kind of came from. It just talks about how the universe was in, in an infinitely small point and then expanded out to a larger point. We don't know anything be, before the... Um, 
forgot what it's called the uh the moment of uh the moment of the singularity expanding into yeah. the universe i get what you mean we don't know anything. Anything. sorry continue we don't know anything before but what i found was super interesting and this is just like a a kind of a random hypothesis that Stephen Hawking wrote in his last book. He yeah. mentioned how we know that the universe was smaller than a certain, like that, uh, whatever size it was, you know, three, 39 nanoms or something. Like, like atoms smaller or than atom. Yeah. 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 Well, but he said that with quantum mechanics, um, we know that particles that size pop in and out of existence all the time. So he said mm. that it, it's quite possible um, mathematically, at least, that the universe popped into existence from that, that and then that expanded from that singularity. But that still doesn't answer the question of what created the, well, like, I mean, I'm begging the question when I say created, but where did the rules come <laughs> from? The singularity, the, you know, so I get you, I get you. I have no idea. Because, for example, because look, everything, like, anything other than, being a creator would just be a theory. Everyone would be saying, okay, then this theory, because I've, I've had debates with people and basically it would be basically a lot of people saying, hey, listen, there was two rocks that came into existence from out of nowhere and collided with each other and created the Big Bang Theory, which is okay, goes against everything that the science community believes in, and then it's this and that, and there was a lot of different things. So it, there is a lot of, I guess, guessing game in this if you know what i mean there's a lot of guesses in this game but i think generally speaking we can come to the agreements that this little singularity cannot have come from nothing because even then something smaller than an atom cannot have enough force to expand True. into the wide universe because you're talking about something that we can't even see right now basically creating this whole universe which is basically from nothing that in True. itself is You're saying, but it's the problem is when we're, I, I think we're even begging the question when we say the whole universe came into existence from the singularity because came is a part, passage of time and time there was no time then like time was started yeah, I yeah. but but just I, I really I thought of a really good analogy just just as I was talking before about what I what I believe so you know how like people everyone makes the claim like everyone used to think the earth was flat right like people yeah, say of that. Course. Um, I, I I'm trying to be the person that says I don't know if the Earth is fucking flat, right? I, I don't have enough information. If I was living 500 years ago, I don't have enough information to to decide whether or not the Earth is flat. And I don't think we can just look at the the Earth and go, it seems flat, therefore it is flat. I want to look at like more evidence. So when it comes to like religious claims, I have like Islam on one on one side telling me one thing, Christianity telling me another thing, yeah, Catholicism. And they're all telling different things, and they've all got merits and problems. Um, in my, you know, I'm not to offend you or anything. I'm for, for my opinion. No, no, you're not offending me. Um, but um, so, so therefore, I go. Well, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced of the evidence of these things. I think okay, but then, if we're speaking logically, if the universe was to have come from nothing, would that wouldn't that in itself require a huge leap of faith? Because they say it came from a small atom. Well, Which is basically if, we, from if we were to if we were to use that language that it came from something, possibly it could be a huge leap. But I wouldn't even use that language. This is what I'm saying. I would I would not go came, but popped into existence. Let's say just popped into existence from nothing. Not came, but let's say it popped into existence from nothing. Wouldn't that still need a huge leap of faith? Look, wouldn't that that little atom that had enough force to create the entire universe wouldn't that in itself require a huge leap of faith because here's the thing for example if if the universe came by chance let's just say because that's what you believe in came by chance yeah uh, i'm not i'm not sure but i would i generally with with subjects as big as as complicated as like this or evolution i just try and point to consensus and i think that the consensus says that yeah so is it that's so, that's, that's generally where i'll lean but it's not necessarily what i'm like i'm not like yes i'm 100 percent sold on this like yeah but okay so if we say if we come to the okay so if we just say like for example that the universe is smaller than let's say there was a little singularity that didn't come from nowhere but popped into existence wouldn't we see more things pop into existence like the Big Bang Theory? Because if it's a one-off event, then it's pretty controlled. That The fact that something as beautiful as this was just a one-off event. Because I would come to the consensus that if it was randomly 
from nowhere, then we would have more random events, something similar to the Big Bang Theory, still happening somewhere out there in the universe, and it would be seen and felt, obviously, if it was just one. But the fact that it's a one-off thing tells me that it should have been controlled. It should be controlled. Otherwise, we would have more galaxies and universes spurring out of nowhere. We're, we're thinking so small with that thought, right? Like, because... Because like we're thinking on the size of the universe, which is massive, right? But then there's obviously the edge of where we can like ever see with the universe because light because it's escaping faster than light can travel. So it's yeah. like the edge of the universe. What's to say that like 500 universes away, there's another universe popping into existence? I was just talking to um, a Hindu that told me that um, Hinduism is the only religion that has multiverses, and Islam and Christianity don't cover it. And I'm like, <laughs> what? So, so like, you'd be surprised. Islam doesn't deny it. I mean, for example, we said it says okay. It says here in Surah Al Fatiha. You'd be surprised. Um, I was speaking to a brother about this. Actually, you'd be surprised. But it says this. Hold on, give me one second. Let me just read this quickly. So, it's Surah Al Fatiha, which is chapter one of the Quran. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So basically it says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, which means all praise be to, to God, Lord of the worlds. So basically the fact that it's saying worlds, it's not only speaking about this world here. So it can, it, Islam doesn't deny the fact that there could be a multiverse. It doesn't say it, but the thing is, if it's not, if the Quran or any of the hadiths are not mentioning it, then it, it means it's not very important. I mean, Islam says, like, there's things that you're going to learn outside of the Qur'an. You investigate the world and you will learn more things than whatever is in the Qur'an. Like, for example, with macro, not macro, micro evolution, you know, we know micro evolution exists because all these different things, like, you know, I'm white, some people are a bit more dark and all these things. Islam doesn't deny that there's any multiverse. The fact that it says Lord of the worlds in plural as well is a big thing in itself. So... We don't deny that there's a multiverse. It's not a problem. It's just that if it's not mentioned, clearly state that there's other multiverses, then it's not important to us. You get what I mean? Yeah. Um, can, can I ask how you became a uh, Muslim? Yeah. Um, look, so... A, I don't... It's yeah, fine. No, I, I'm not sure grew up in you a Muslim. No, it's fine, fine. I grew up in a Muslim household. And I never really looked into any of the... I didn't look into the religion. I was basically atheist. Not atheist. An agnostic. Like, I believed there was a creator. and But I just didn't really care. It wasn't really into me. And then 2009, my auntie introduced me to Islam. And I learned a lot of it. And then I just stopped giving a crap about Islam. And then 2016, I had a dream. And no, I'm not going to say, I saw Jesus of Allah. It's not that. It's just I had a basic dream where I died. And I'm like, huh. All right, what's the purpose of our existence? So I started looking into religions. I looked into Hinduism. I looked into Islam. I looked into Judaism, Christianity. I looked into a lot of different religions. And basically, none of them made sense as much as Islam did. because, And there's many different reasons for that. And I can go into it for hours. But I came to the consensus that the Quran, the, the, the word of Allah, it hasn't been changed. So it was just, it started off with just a dream. It went into logic, and from logic, my faith grows. So the foundation of how I built my religion was based off logic. Because I didn't want to have the Christians, are oh, I felt good because of the Holy Spirit. I said, look, I need to lay the foundation straight away. As soon as I can lay it down and understand how, what this is made out of, then I'll build faith on top of the foundation. Because if you have a foundation full of faith, then the rest of the structure is weak. It's funny because... Um... Because when I became a Christian, I, I grew up in church, similar I grew up in church, but I had this moment in a youth group where I would say that I felt the Holy Spirit. But it was more that like people were praying for me and um, that why I wouldn't and saying over me and telling me things I couldn't know. Um, and then I got more and more involved in the church. I started laying hands on people, speaking in tongues, and and things that at the time I really hey yeah. No, no, I said wa alaikum wa salam. So whenever someone says assalamu alaikum and islam, we're always meant to respond with wa alaikum wa salam. So it means it's basically hello, peace be upon you. And I have, always have to return my salams a peace be upon you to it's always uh, it's a very important thing. Anyways, okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, um, hey, Adam. Yo. 
One second, Hello? just one second to interrupt. My dad just joined the live and gave me ten dollars and said that in ten coins. He said, "I love you." So if he's still here, I love you too. You're so sweet. Thank you. Sorry, my dad just joined. <laughs> he's very in, in service and debate, so I just thought and I'd say hi. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. really. I did, I did, Samuel. Anyways, yeah, sorry. Continue with what you were saying. That's actually very sweet of him, mashallah. So yeah, yeah continue. Um, then. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, no, I had, um, I had, you know, I had these tremendous experiences. I remember looking at a friend of mine, like convulsing on the floor in what looked like some sort of a seizure slash demonic thing experience, and um, for like forty five <laughs> minutes. You know, I've seen that before. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the feelings of like being drunk on the Holy Spirit. I remember touching someone. And they like flew back with the power of God. And I remember saying to myself, I can never deny this. I can never deny what I'm seeing now. But now yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With well, this, don't... We, we don't have, we, wait, what yeah, I can, um, Bridget, can I bring up one of the brothers, my sister? One of the brothers? What? Uh, just Bridget. So just the Bridget. I was, I was trying, I was trying to let earlier I was going to, that's why I had unmuted was to say that to let Dallas studios come up because yeah. I noticed he um, wanted to come up earlier. So I'll just, yeah. I'm just going to hop on. All right. Nora, sister. Always a pleasure talking to you, Bridget. Inshallah. Yeah. Well, oh so, I want. Okay. Okay. so I want to bring up one of my good friends. So yeah. Um. Anyway, so yeah, continue with what you were saying. You, you brought up a lot of good points that helped me actually leave Christianity when I was in my uh, late teens. Balance. So you're you're making the points that I was making uh, earlier in my life. Yeah. Oh, yeah um, David, um, the sister over here, she has basically a similar life story to you. Very similar. Like she was an agnostic atheist, and she was she hated. Um, religious people at one point and all these different things, but Alhamdulillah, yeah, she's found herself into Islam. So she's yeah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm absolutely yeah. the same as well. So for me, it was exactly like that. Uh, but it was only uh, later on where I was sort of challenged on some of my beliefs, where I had to maybe, you know, consider the views that I was holding. Um, I think atheism, like though it can sound attractive in in certain circumstances, there are certain realms whereby it can be very difficult to defend the position. But we'll discuss that as we go on in the conversation. Sure. I'm just just to be clear though on my position, I only use the word atheist because it, it like I don't really like the word, but it, like to me, all atheism is is a claim um, is a claim it is about a, one claim, and that someone says to me, "Do you believe in God?" and I say, "No." <laughs> I'm not saying I don't. I'm not saying there is no God. I'm not saying God doesn't exist. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying, I'm like, that. I'm saying I'm convinced by any of the evidence. I don't even like the word believe. So when someone tells me, yeah. I do believe in God, I'm not convinced of it, of the existence of God yet. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'd be willing to be convinced. But um, so, let's, yeah. so let's start with that. Let's start with that then. So uh, let me reword your question. I know it's not really a question. We're having a conversation. So you said mm -hmm. you're not convinced of a God. So most people will be convinced by certain things based upon certain proofs. Yeah, that's yep. fair to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we were to reword the answer, we would say, what proof is there of a, of a God? That's mm -hmm. a good question. Right. So when I get asked this question, what proof would you accept? Um, well, it depends what God you're talking about. So if one if you if one was to make the claim and say prove there's a god, as mm -hmm. the in, as the questioner who's asked this question, so let's say you ask this question to me, I would ask you back to say, okay, what proof would you accept? Yeah, so that's what I'm asking though. So are we talking about Allah specifically, or are we talking about? It doesn't have to be. Uh, I'm saying a creator of the universe. At the this creator stage. of the universe in general, like, like a, just the generalization of the creator. Um, yeah. So. The, you yeah. See, so yeah, there are many definitions of a creator, but let's just go by the the, the originator of the universe. Let's just start with that. Well, I had a I had a Christian apologist ask me the same thing once, um, and I wish I replied by saying um, that it would be the same. Uh, the evidence I would need would be the same thing to that you would need to believe in a married bachelor, and that is that the Christian God seems to be an oxymoron. It doesn't seem to work. 
right? Like we, we know d- different things. But unfortunately, I'm talking to some Muslims and I don't know enough <laughs> about um, the Quran to be able to point out things that I find problematic. Um, of course, the ish- I, I can go with the typical, um, the typical like, uh, you know, did Muhammad really split the moon in two? Um, or did these miracles really happen? Um, or ha- but re- really, they're all just a distraction because you guys are much more versed on those things. And even if those things were um, legitimately true, I do necessarily subscribe to. Um, have you heard of David Hume and his uh, Hume's Razor? Yes. Yeah. So I generally, I generally subscribe to the idea. Generally, subscribe to the idea that. Um, uh, th- no testimony is sufficient to establish a miracle unless that testimony be of of um, of so uh, so miraculous that its um, falsehood is more miraculous than its um, than the miracle it's trying to prove. So, in other words, like if if someone tells me that you know they saw Jesus rise from the dead, um, that testimony is only. Um, like that testimony is only only warrants the belief in that miracle if that testimony if the if the falsehood of that testimony um, is more would be more miraculous than the miracle it tries to um, portray. So mm. if you could show me, I guess now this is I'm only doing it so the conversation can move forward. But if you could show me somewhere where um, somewhere in the Quran. Um, it, it testified to something about the creator of the universe that its falsehood would be more miraculous than the thing that it's trying to um, portray. That would probably convince me. For me, I understand the way you're going about this. And obviously, it looks like you've obviously had these sorts of conversations before, and that's great. But I think mm-hmm. for me, I mean, again, just for me, forget theology. Just the concept of a creator of the universe. Yeah. As a as that statement, is it rational or irrational? So, uh, sorry, is what irrational or irrational? A creator that this universe has a creator is that a rational belief or irrational belief? I don't. I'm. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to like. I'm. I'm. I'm moot on the on the point because I don't have enough information. It's like asking. So I guess, okay. It's like. It's like, so it's so like one asking, example. Sorry, like go ahead, Mother. It's like asking, um, um, uh, like it. I don't know. I was going to use a Pokemon analogy. Like, is is this Pokemon the best Pokemon? No, is it, no. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I I can't because I don't know what the word creator means. I guess. I guess yes. What, it, I guess. what we say is, look, when when I was having the discussion with you, brother, it wasn't about like basically coming from our religion because Christians, when they come to talk to you about these certain aspects, a lot of Christians, they say, oh, it says it in the Bible, this in the Bible, that, but we don't go about that, right? We come from an, so whenever we have this discussion with an atheist, we're coming from an agnostic view now. So we're not coming from an Islamic view. The Islamic view, we come to that later, the theology and the, what Islam says, but we don't go into that straight away. We come, we come from a different direction. And then once we establish the foundation of that, then we go yeah. to theology such as Islam and what Islam says. But first, we have to learn the foundation before we get into religion. Remember so, what yeah. I said? So, once, yeah. first, yeah. Yeah. so, so I guess. So once we define, once we define a creator, then we can. Sorry, once we define the necessity of a creator, then we can talk about what that creator is. At the stage yeah. now, it's establishing if that even ex- that concept even is possible or rational. Yeah, I, so I think that's that's where we're gonna we're not gonna be able to move past this unless we just talk hypothetically. Because my my issue is essentially that is I don't know how like uh, we could like is it possible that a creator created everything? Yes. Is it possible that no creator created everything? Yes. Like mm. oh, okay, one one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. So the statement that you just said, mm. something can be created without a creator. What do you base that on? Um. So in our worldview, in our experience yeah, as to, humans in our day to day life. Yeah, I'd have to reword that. Because the word created okay. begging the question. Yeah. So i would have to reword that. So I went, yeah, I'd have to I'd have to go back to the drawing board even further. And I'm not trying to be this uh, evasive. I'm re- I'm really trying to give you a proper answer. I don't know how to answer it. That's fine. It, it's fine. It, it takes time, but it's like at the end of the day, we're like we're saying we do know. Because 
you're yeah. saying you don't. It's not a. It's not an insult. We're not saying ha ha sucked in or whatever. We're not like okay. we're just saying you say you don't know, but we're like we're confident in what we're saying. So it's just, yeah, sure. Yeah. But okay, can I, can I flip it on the head? It's head, so maybe you can see where where I'm having problems. Yeah. Okay. I, I want I want you to imagine, right, the existence of a creator who created Allah. No, because as I said. David, that would go into the problem of an infinite regress because no, no, could... we're not, we're, we're not, we're, we're, we're not talking about, but we're not talking about Allah yet, right? We're just talking about the creator of the creator. So we're not going to the regress. I just need you to think that. Can you do that? Okay, so the, the, where the conversation is now leading into something as such, now we have to define certain attributes of the creator. Yeah. So in the, it's, so I understand where you're coming from. I know where the brother's going. So because remember, every theology has a different interpretation of what a creator is. Okay. So in Hinduism, for example, you brought that into the table. There are going to be creators whereby they have creators. Okay. So they are mm -hmm. avatars that come from the one supreme being. Because even then, they they also subscribe to a one supreme being called Brahma. So for them, mm -hmm. that is the supreme being and that's always existed. So if I was speaking to them, I'll go a step further and say, okay, well, you make the claim to the supreme being that has always existed. So yes, now then when you ask this question, yes, we then do have to put our theological hat on. Because in the Islamic realm, the creator in Islam is uncreated. This is one of his attributes. He has mm -hmm. always existed. He's so independent one of his creation. He's independent of his creation. Yeah, so yeah. I think this is so I think that this is exactly. I think you hit the nail on the head. Because, um, I'm. I, I don't assume that we were created, or that we could be created, or that we're not created. I don't know yet, so it's hard for me to visualize a creator. And you guys have assumed, not assumed, but you believe that there is a creator. And so when I ask you to think of a creator of a creator, it causes like a short circuit, and it's like the same way it's short circuiting my brain. We can't get past that. Um, then, but it would be the same thing as saying, David, like, did the universe come from nowhere? Because then that would also short circuit my brain as well, because then that requires a huge leap of faith. Like, for example, look, look at my screen very quickly. It's black. It's dark. It's there's nothing there. Nothing. Then basically just an entire universe comes from that absolute nothingness that in itself also short circuits my mind. But then. In a way, when you put a creator there, that's the stop. That's the end or be all. It's like, and let me give you an example. Because you said, imagine a creator having a creator. Let me give you an example. So imagine, you know, you were a guy with a sniper and you're ready to shoot a person, you know, some terrorist, let's say, yeah? Then you have to report to your, um, what is it called? General. Hey, general, should I take the shot? That general will be like, oh, I have to go to my general. All right, general this, and then general that, then general this, and it will go, 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 and then you have an infinite regress, and it will never stop. But what we say is that let's say there's one. So do I, can I take the sniper shot? Then the general will come back to you straight away and say, yes, you take that sniper shot. So that's we're saying that there's a stop there. But what you're saying is there's this, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this, this, and then basically we shouldn't exist is what I'm saying. But if you know what I'm saying, saying you it, it's like trying it can be it can be more than, it can be it, it can be more than one general but there has to be a first cause yeah so there has to be the ultimate one so even the, in that scenario the, the beautiful brother portrayed even then you can have people but there has to be someone who's the top daddy who's right there at the front he <laughs> takes the call he makes the decisions so we will call that the first cause and he has to exist because if he doesn't he exist left. they keep on asking them. Have you looked that up one just to let David speak? Sorry, continue, David. I was just going to say, have you looked up any um, criticisms of the first cause argument? There are some, there are some objections, but again, e every theory has objections. The big yeah, bang yeah, theory course, has different. Models. Of course, so do... have you looked at? Have you looked looked them up? Have you like actually like have you read them? I'm not saying I have. I'm just I'm just asking the question because I find a lot of time people. I mean, are talking... a lot of ideas but from what i understand yeah i i certainly have this is something that i did i can't recall them to you at this moment in time but i do recall that earlier on when i was looking into theology and i did look at this issue with infinite regress because this is all tied into what's known as the contingent contingency argument um and mm -hmm. you, you can even use the kalam cosmological argument in here as well so yeah. um, and, and and they both propre that there has to be something 
Because again, it's like the domino effect, because that's another way in philosophy they talk about this subject matter, whereby you have a stack of dominoes, right? Now, no domino would fall if the first domino wasn't dropped, right? None of it is going to happen. So there has to be a first domino that was, you know, dropped in order for that sequence of events to start. If that never happened, no dominoes would drop. But this, okay, so lot. maybe maybe you can help me answer this then. So that makes sense to my like you know, primate brain, brain right? <laughs> it makes sense right now. But like, when you start talking about like, um, you know, singularity, big bang theory, um, cosmology, um, general relativity, quantum mechanics, shit gets really weird. Like you, you <laughs> stuff, stuff doesn't work exactly. unless you look at it. like, uh, you know, things are, are both waves and particles at the same yeah. time. Um, yeah. you know, Absolutely. like trotting is can't like, how do you explain that thing? Like, if I was to say to you, like, well, actually, there's a cat in one box and a cat in another box, and, and one's dead and one and that one's dead and alive, and the other one's dead and alive until you open the box, like, you'd be like, you're a madman. This makes no sense. But we know that this is the case with like um, quantum mechanics. So it's like I, I don't know if we can use our current rationale about like how things work, like donors going tick 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 tick, and t bring that back to the singularity before. We know time even existed and then extrapolate out, well, there must have been a creator. I don't know if we can do that. Here's the thing, though. Any theory that you throw to the table, right, or any form of hypothesis, so you can even use evolution. We could talk Big Bang. We could talk quantum mechanics. What mm -hmm. helped me to come around all of this was that none of them disprove a creator. That's the thing. The and even a lot of people would admit to that. And even people like in my country, so Richard Dawkins, I don't know if you know him, he's a very, he's like the fun yeah. cover boy for, for evolution. Well. Even, even, yeah. Yeah, even someone like him would say, I, I subscribe to all of this, but by no way, shape or form can I say that, so evolution could exist. It doesn't mean there's no creator that made it happen as so. I can't disprove oh, a creator. Course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I, um, but, I, by the way, David, I'm, one thing you can ask any question one of the sisters told me just to ask any question so feel free to ask anything and don't be shy inshallah uh, okay um so, so yeah uh, one of my one of my um you know like i always point people to this christian apologist if they're christian and they want to remain christian on my youtube channel even though i'm mainly atheistic because he you know he the, the the science of evolution and everything like that and i think he approaches it as honestly as you can be as a as a um as an apologist because i think most apologists are quite dishonest but yeah that, that's great but like the theory like so have, do you guys know of kent hoven no okay. it's like this big it's like this uh, big meme i guess you'd say but he's been preaching creationism for like 30 years or whatever and he says things like well you know the theory of evolution isn't just the theory of evolution because you also need millions of years and you also need um co the cosmological evolution and he makes all these like weird words but the thing about evolution is it's only talking about well sorry the thing about evolution via natural selection is only talking about the diversification of life it's not talking about where life came from that's abiogenesis it's not talking about where the universe came from that's like cosmological science it's not talking about like any of that stuff so to expect that they would be mentioning anything about a creator is is beyond the point it's not it's not it's not even relevant like it's not it's like and, and the same thing goes for like when people criticize you know certain texts for not having you know, I, I view the Quran and the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita and Mahabharata, all those books, as like humanity's first attempt to try and understand the cosmos. And, and that's why I think that some things are good and some things are bad. But it doesn't mean like they were going to talk about evolution in them because they're not, that's, that's not what they're for. That's not, that's not, that's not what they're doing. I mean, that's, that's going and I feel further. Like also, a like very ahead. big misconception of, um, of Islam understanding everything and religion understanding everything. My perception of it is kind of like someone who's colorblind, for instance. Like, they're not able to understand what color is like until they put on those glasses. So there's some things, like the colorblind glasses, there's some things in this world that the Quran is not going to be able to explain, that other Muslims are not going to be able to explain, that the Hadiths are not going to be able to explain. And that's because they're not set out for us in this world to understand, which is why once we pass, once we go into that next step towards Allah or towards whatever you believe, 
whatever you believe in, that's when there's going to be a higher understanding of some of those questions that we can't answer. So like we said, it's all based on uh, theory and um, assumption until we get to that point. So there's some things that nobody on this planet can explain with proof. It, it just doesn't exist with some topics. Yeah, just, just to add to what Sister said, that there are going to be things that are kept from us. And I think sometimes we have this notion as humans that we're supposed to know everything. And, you know, uh, we're supposed to have, uh, you know, a, a general idea of everything. But I think that's very far from the truth. You know, a lot of things we do not understand. A lot of things we cannot comprehend. And sometimes we have to, I guess, humble to the notion that there are going to be things that we don't quite understand sometimes. And we make okay. assumptions. Yeah. So one very fine example of this is, you know, I go to my doctor. I'm sure you, Brother David, you have a doctor. And, you know, we go and visit our doctor sometimes. When was the last time we asked our doctors to present their, you know, medical certification or anything of that nature? You know, we never mm -hmm. ask for this, but we make an assumption that they're a doctor based on what? Well, yeah. they're in this office, right? He wears a nice tie. He has terrible mm -hmm. handwriting. You know, he's got these tricks <laughs> of a doctor, you know, I can tell him certain things and, you know, he has the answers, but I don't have proof. I yeah. don't really know. I didn't witness him taking his degree. So there are certain assumptions that we make and we don't really dig deep and go oh i need to know that he is a doctor you, i need to see your certificates yeah. mate same same but, as if we got on an airplane you know when was the last but, time any of us said hey pilot before we go into the air i need to have a little look at your you know <laughs> qualifications we yeah make assumptions. That's, that's fair but with 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 airplanes though you're kind of you're hoping that there's a million other moving parts and people who have checked all those things otherwise the companies would go bust but I, but that's why people have fears of flying as well. But the other thing with, with the doctors, like if I'm going to the doctor to get a rash checked out, the, the, the level is the level of risk is very low. Where I would say that probably if, if there is a God, if there is a creator, that is probably the most important question that humanity can answer depending on what that God is. So that's why I take this question very seriously. Because for the longest time, I would have died for my faith and I would have, di I would have, I would have done anything for my faith. And now I don't have those same convictions. So it really concerns me that um, I want to believe as many true things and as little false things as possible. So I'm, 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 I'm super skeptical when it comes to analyzing why, what I believe and why. Yeah. I understand that. That's good. Now, if the brothers don't and the sister doesn't mind, I want to change the topic if that's okay. We're still going to stick on this, but I want to change the, the topic. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. From, what, yeah from sure. what angle are you coming from? I want to talk about morality. Yeah, great. Yes. Okay. Great. I think for me, <laughs> okay. for me, I'm writing, this is, I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book on. I'm writing a book on um, which has a, a chapter on morality. So yeah. this would be good. I think this. Okay, so I can relate to you as a sister can. Now we all have our own life experiences and whatnot, right? So I was like you once upon a time, okay? Mm -hmm. This topic changed my life. Yeah. It changed my life because it really put me into a corner whereby I could not justify the beliefs that I held at the time. And there was mm -hmm. no way for me to answer the question. So then I had to subscribe to, to certain things and that mm -hmm. convinced me that there has to be something and then i built on that and okay. that is morality uh, morality is a very big topic okay Jeez. and it, it's it can be uncomfortable to discuss but it it i think those sorts of conversations can be very fruitful when it comes to science guys let's be honest we're basing it on what people say and their testimonies we're not doing any of the experiments we're not doing we're not going in any lab confirming any of this stuff it's all testimony all right. Yeah, we have I mean, to. We could, you could, you could, I guess, technically believe that every all science is one big conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. yeah. You could say that. But again, I respect certain science because science is in our day to day life. OK, in medicine and everything. So we, we equally shouldn't be so biased to say science is not nothing. Science tells us how. So uh, but not why. OK, that mm -hmm. question it doesn't get answered with science. So for me, I like talking about things that we can maybe relate to. So I think moral morality is something we all relate to. All right. Everyone touches morality. So based on that, sorry for the long introduction. So whereas you as an individual and you sound like a very beautiful person, a very nice person, where do you get your morals from? Uh, I Well, you see, 
but yeah, it's a bit of a tough one. Um, I recently mm. read, um, uh, I don't know the name of the book. I listened to the audio book, but it's the fundamentals of ethics, right? Which goes over essentially every major moral framework from utilitarian to, um, Kant or, or whatever. Right. Um, and it all just cemented my opinion that um, people just operate within their own preferences um, and th these um, morals are built from societal norms. So where do I get my morals from? I don't actually really believe in morals. I'm kind of a moral anti-realist. Really? Don't yep. say that. No, I am. So you don't, you don't believe in the concept of morals at all? Well, no, no, I do believe in concepts of morals, but when it comes to asking the question where the morals come from, I don't, yeah. I don't, I, that's a nonsensical, non, that's a non sequitur to me. Well, it's not, non, well, non no, I see where, I see where the brother is, where, is, where he's going. It's kind of like when people, um, we ask them, because I know we've brought up morals in past debates, is that a lot of people will say, oh, well, I just know what's right. I just know what's right. But with what David just said, it, it, it makes a little bit of sense to me in, in, in a sense of morals are, are formed by society and what people seem to be right and wrong. And then there's a few outliers that'll say, oh, well, I think it's okay to kill a person because mm. they did this. So I think it's perfectly moral for me to do this when all reality to everybody else, it's not, which is where us as Muslims will say that the Quran is what brings us a moral template, like a key for what morals are supposed to be and what's not, what, no matter what, what our okay. opinions are. Yeah, inshallah, we'll get there. We'll get to that, inshallah. We'll, we'll get into that. that. That was, but yeah, I, that's really beautiful what you just said, um, Honeybee. I think that's you that was talking. Um, I uh, just, I can, I can, I can give a quick example of, of a, um, of, of, of where I run into this the most, right? Um, can, can I give a quick example, like a couple of minutes or less than that? Is it okay with you guys? Yeah, sure, sure. Take I was once walking down the street and this lady came up to me and she was proselytizing. She was preaching about Christianity. And I said, look, I'm not comfortable having this conversation. I'm happy to, I'm just want to move on. And then check my wishes. And I got stuck there talking to her and I just said, okay, like eventually I asked her to leave and she said, no. So I was like, I'm going to take the kids glo kid gloves off. I'm going to ask her some tough questions, right? Because if she's going to put me in this situation, I'm going to ask her tough questions. And she was telling me all these things about how beautiful God is, how Loves. She was a Christian. How much God loves everyone. How God, you know, saved her. And, and I said, "How do you rectify the scriptures in the Old Testament or even in the New Testament that are pretty abhorrent?" And she said, "What do you mean?" I said, "Well, the Old Testament endorses slavery. So does the New Testament." And she said, "No, it doesn't." And I said, "Yes, it does." And she goes, "Show me." And I said, "Okay." And I, I pointed to the scriptures that do. And then as soon as I pointed to them, she said, "Okay, well, that was a different time." So straight away, her first action was, "No, it doesn't." right? Because she had this belief that no, slavery was not in the Bible. And then when I pointed it out, she started making excuses for why it's in the Bible. And then when I kept pushing her on, you know, my, my, my dear friends, Dr. Josh wrote a book. He's an Assyriologist, PhD, wrote a book on does the Old Testament endorse slavery? Yes, it's, it's all fraught, right? I got a book back, back, back there. I won't hold it up. And you know, I, I knew all this stuff and I, I kept pointing out, no, this was in slavery. You could put an all through the ear. You could take the virgin girls for yourself if you um, genocided and <laughs> um, but you were to kill the little right. boys, right? And, right. And, 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 and so, at the the end, Bible. yeah, and I, at the end of the conversation, I said, now, um, I said, is slavery moral, right? Because I showed her all this stuff. And then she said, I'm not going to even answer such a stupid question, right? She, she was stuck. <laughs> she was like really stuck. And I knew that if she said it was immoral that she's going against what the bible says and she and she knows that if she said she was moral she'd be going against something that's inside of her that's telling her it's it's moral that's immoral so um she said she eventually said i said no please answer the question do you think slavery is moral can i own someone as a slave and beat them as long as they don't die within a few days um and then she said old testament on you and i said Old Testament, that's not good and then she that's she just avoided it like a like she was like ah, oh, and then eventually started yelling at me and told me that God was going to harden my heart, and I walked off. Now this happens over and over and over and over again when I bring up problematic verses in the Bible to Christians because Christians don't get the morality from the Bible, but they laugh at atheists like they have some special knowledge. Like they always say, "Where do you get your morality from?" And then when you point out stuff in the Bible, like women need to shut the up in church and you know and and all that stuff they they disagree with it now you guys might not have that problem because i'm sure that 
it, well, as far as I know, um, people who it, it, um, Islam are much more <laughs> um, much no, more. No. Read the, they read the Quran more than a Christian reads. They read the Quran more in one day than a Christian reads the Bible in their entire life. Sometimes, so um, <laughs> so it might not be the case. But for, for me, that was a perfect example of someone saying that their morality was objective, and but really it wasn't. Like it wasn't objective, um, and, and the morality was actually subjective, and it was built on my understanding of like social norms, how they were raised, um, etc. Right. Like That's the same thing. Like, another another just quick example. My wife and I um, were Christians. We never celebrated Halloween. She was always told Halloween was evil. Recently, I've wanted to celebrate Halloween. We moved into a new community in the Sunshine Coast of Australia, and we wanted to get um, you know some Halloween stuff put at the front. And just seeing those skulls and and seeing the little rats and stuff made my wife feel really queasy, and she felt really bad about doing that. But we pushed through those uncomfortable feelings because we we could rationalize that it wasn't immoral to hang up Halloween stuff, even though we were told our whole lives that it was. Um, so for me, that's why I think um, morality is just people operating within their own preferences. Society gets built off those morals, and then holy books usually get written about those morals in, in a way to organize society, and it works very well. I, I totally get that. And, you know, you made some very interesting points, and I, and for the most part, I agree with you. I mean, I don't really want to discuss Christianity, but you did make a good yeah. example. This is where we would maybe, when it comes to digging into theology, and talking about other belief systems. So we talk to lots of Christians and we, uh, w- what happens in that scenario, brother, we bring those sort of verses that you've brought to the table to say, if there was a creator, would he reveal such things? You know, and, th- and that goes into a bigger conversation whereby we then talk about the historicity of these texts. We look at manuscriptures. We look at where's this come from? So it, it's, it's a big... Yeah. No, I was going to say, for example, Ezekiel 33, I think, 32, you know? I don't know if you yeah, know that yeah. verse, yeah. 33 verse 32. I think it's 32 verse 32, hold on. Um, and also, no, just a 30, side note, David, I'm sure you know. Which one was it? It was, it was a, hold on, hold on, hold on. They're all on. pagan holidays. Hold on, give me a oh. second, David, I'll find it for you quickly. I don't care about. It. Oh no, Halloween comes from Celtic tradition, but I don't care about that. I don't care if it's a Satanist holiday. I like enjoying it and I like handing out kids. Oh no, I mean yeah. Christmas. Oh no, it's Easter. 2320, sorry. 2320. 2320, sorry. 2320. Um, yeah, not just 20. quick um just quickly to um to Honeybee's point. Um I I would point you to one of my friends who's a Christian who is his, 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 um, he's doing, completing a master's of um, philosophy and he strongly debunks the claim that Christmas or Easter are pagan. I can point point you to his stuff, but I, I mean, I used to think that as well. I have a book up there called Pagan Christianity, but he, he really does a good job at like tearing these things apart. His name is, I can send you his link and stuff if you reach out. Oh, I, I already know it's um, pagan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for example, a lot of these traditions came from up north in Europe. Like most of them came from north and it was a lot to do with um with the winter solstice, which wasn't even a part of Christianity. It was a part of the northern, yeah, it's just it's all you yeah. got a guy named um ba- the mix of name? a lot of different cultures that affiliate yeah. other people into Christianity. Yeah, there, there, there's definitely like obviously some cross pollination there, but the the idea that like because there's some, there's some people going around TikTok at the moment saying things like you know um, the Easter Bunny comes from Ishtar, the you know pagan god, uh, the Canaanite god or whatever, um, and you're like, no, that's not true. Like they draw these like you know Venn diagrams that are just over the shop. It's interesting, but it's just conspiratorial and it's actually not real. But not that I care. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, the, the purpose of those conversations are to say that some of these holidays that exist, when it comes to the people that practice those theologies, if we look into their books and scriptures, we don't find them there. We don't find oh, that yeah. Jesus preached these things. Yeah, that's, that's, so that's different. Those, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so those arguments are there to say, hey, dude, okay, this is a belief system you subscribe to. These are certain, some of the holidays that you subscribe to. But when we look into the deep-rooted sort of nature of your theology, they don't exist. And then, yes, we can then maybe find maybe origins to where they came came to be because certainly they are not part of what Jesus taught and the apostles yeah. taught. 
But yeah, I guess that's Hang why on. that concept. I want, but I want also, to stay like, back to where we. Sorry, go ahead. Finish your point, Robert. I was just gonna. This is a stupid point, but I was just gonna say, like, neither are vehicles or you know um, microphones, but we use them in church because it help. They the people say they help glorify God. But the 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 thing I, I remember was talking to another Asteriologist on my podcast. I have a podcast, by the way, everyone called Deep Drinks Podcast on YouTube, Spotify. But Did you plug in, eh? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, getting a plug in. But the thing is, um, I was I was talking to this Christian Asteriologist, and I said, "Is it possible that that?" God never wanted his work to be written down. Like, never wanted it. Because nowhere do I know in the Bible does it say to write these words down. And maybe, like, maybe that was the devil's work. Maybe God wanted us to use the power of the Holy Spirit to witness to people. And she just lost her, she lost her mind. She was like, oh, my God, yeah, you could actually say that. And I'm like, yeah, fucking, yeah. Because it's not mentioned in the Bible to write the words down of what, like, of what Jesus did or anything like that. And there's obviously contradictions, which is what the title of this thing says. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah, continue with the real question so yeah if you don't mind let's let's stare it back to where we said so yeah. just to re-establish your point because one thing i wouldn't want to do is to straw man you so if yeah. you don't mind just just to summarize so when you so you as an individual where where do you get your morals from i don't think i've got the answer i know you did explain it but could you summarize it for me i do, i don't i don't think you get moral well i don't know i don't know how to answer that's not this is going to sound okay, like a big nonsense cool. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal man you because I'm I'm sort of gonna prove to you that you sort of do have morals that you go by. Okay, you might not know where they come from. Morals. I'm gonna demonstrate it. I do have morals. Sorry, I should I should clarify. I I do have morals, but I'm just operating within my own preferences. Okay. Yeah. Let me do a scenario, and I want to apologize to everyone. Okay, I'm sorry. We're gonna do this nasty scenario. Okay. Yep. So there's a father and a son. Mm -hmm. Both adults. Both consenting, both over the age of, you know, sort of innocence, if you like, so 25 and, you know, whatever. That's how old the son is. The father's, let's say, 45, 40, nearly 50, okay? Both of them just have this weird attraction for one another, right? And they want to, yeah, they'll be totally fine to do that. Okay, so in your world, so, you, so okay, so you answered the question. So you don't think there's I, anything I, wrong with them? I've also, I've also watched Destiny. Okay, so I know, I know I know what you're doing with this. So, yeah. So, nah, you, so okay. come on, man. You, I, I don't want come to. On, don't want to... That... No, 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 no. Mm. I want him to. I want him to maybe tell us what uh, how he got to that conclusion. Again, he may have his own mm -hmm. way of thinking about that. So, my brother, do I'm not explain to fun of him. I'm, it's just a that, okay, uh, so, so the so the way that I would so the way that I would attack this right is um, I, generally I think that if people aren't harming anyone, they should be able to do whatever they want, right? To, 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 if they're not harming anyone or the planet or, or to animals, right? So that's where I, where I start with that. And then I go to, um, uh, okay, so um, there's two people that want to fuck, two adults that want to fuck. They're not harming anyone. What would be the immoral? So if we start from a basis of like there, there is no right or wrong, so what would be the wrong thing there, right? So like... Go tell me what the wrong thing is. Without without appealing to Islam, tell me what the wrong thing is there. The wrong a thing is, is that it's incest. That's the issue. Yeah. And it's what's wrong with incest? What's the problem with incest? The problem with it is it's under. Just sorry, just to clarify too, I'm disgusted by that. I would never want to do that for myself or anyone that I care about. But if two randoms that I didn't know about, there's a problem it. there now. Okay, there's a okay. problem there now. Okay, yeah. there's a problem there now. Yeah. You are saying, so long as they're okay with it, you're okay with it. But equally, you would never put yourself into that scenario. Because um, clearly, yeah. you if I do have so, a problem with it. I live in Australia, right? So, like, what people sometimes do is they get prawns. We don't, we don't fry shrimp from the barbie. We eat prawns, right? And they'll get prawns. They'll peel the head off and they'll suck out the brains. I don't think that mm. actually is immoral, but it's fucking disgusting, right? To me, it's fucking disgusting okay but it's not immoral i wouldn't say that someone needs to go to jail for sucking the brains of prawns right but it's just and i wouldn't want someone around me sucking the brains of prawns okay so that's that's the similar analogy but i understand that yeah i understand that but i find it very interesting um again this is not to uh put you label you my brother you seem like i said a nice guy i'm just trying to get my head around the, how you explain that so mm -hmm. obviously 
you don't have a problem with the father and the son that are consenting to go go because they're not harming anyone. Okay, that's well and good. But equally, at the same time, that's not something you would ever do with your children when no. you're old. And if they're like, Daddy, oh, I love you, you will never go, oh, I love you too. Let's go upstairs. No. That's not going to happen, all right? Because no. obviously that's, that's disgusting. <laughs> but then, but then again, you, you, I find it interesting how when it comes to other people, you're okay with it. But when it comes to you as an individual, it's wrong for you. Because I'd I never know, them. But why are you then okay with other people doing it to their wait. kids? Okay, so wait, are, are you a homosexual? No. <laughs> Do you think? Okay. Do, would you like to <laughs> why suck you cock? Me that? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Would you, no, would you like to suck cock? Uh, no, no, thanks. I'm good. So, but do you do you acknowledge that other people in the world, um, other males in the world, do want to suck cocks? Yes, but I don't think they should be doing that. Yeah, okay, but that's because of Islam, right, or whatever. But like, do do, do you but acknowledge you, but that you? Yeah, but the, but but, in, but do, that's do different to you and all because, because you're okay for other people to do. It. The thing is, David, what David, what you're doing is you're you're basing your arguments based off emotions and your own experience. But what we obviously know that there's objective truth. I mean, like one plus one is two. No, but first, there's, there's, you, you, you made a mistake in the uh, third word you said. You're basing your arguments. I'm not making an argument. Like I said, I'm a moral anti-realist. But you're like your not argument, but your morals. Sorry, like you're basing your morals off of emotions, not argument. Sorry, morals. Yeah, but I'm not. I don't, like I said, I'm not basing my morals off that because I don't think morals exist. I think people operate within their own preferences. <laughs> so, would so, you say you having you having in you having a relationship with your children? You would not say that that's immoral. No. Yes. It, yes, it is. For me, it's immoral. Yes, it's disgusting. Thing I want to do is subscribe to a moral. Then wait, hang on. Um, I don't want. To, I don't want to have sex with my children. <laughs> Listen, it was hard for me too. It was hard for me too. I had to accept it that there are certain things that I. W if I apply it to myself, if I'm okay with my neighbour doing it, and they're okay with it, then with that same knowledge, I need to be okay with it too. But I know I'm not okay no, with it. I will not, not do not that. That's not that's that's if you subscribe to some like a like objective um perspective of morality that only works I think if you but I think most people I think most people the thing is the thing is David you and I we've got the same view you wouldn't do it to you know your son and I wouldn't yeah. either and I like to think Sorry, most it, humans it, it, would it, it, also it, well, because doing it to your son is much different than two consenting fucking 40 year old adults. Yeah, but they're going, consenting. You know, in, in the scenario, yeah. they're consenting. In, in that yeah. scenario, you're consenting and the son is consenting. And he's of an age where he can make a decision. So okay. he's consenting, right? So yeah. both are consenting. But even if my yeah. son was all right with it, I'm like, dude, you need to slap. I'm, what are you, what's wrong with you? What's been, what's okay. your mother been feeding you? <laughs> Why do you feel this way? Like, you okay. know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't entertain it at all. And neither Wait, would you. Could I, I flip this on you? Go on then. If you um, open up the Quran and you're like, oh, shit, there's a part in the Quran I've never read before and it actually says fathers must have sex with their sons when they turn 40, would you think that's moral? That's the whole global conversation as regards to, you know, who defines morality. <laughs> but but you'd have to say again, yes. If you, believe, if you believe in the objective morality of the Quran, you'd have to say yes. Okay, if the Quran said that, if but, the that's, Quran said, but that's contradictory to the religion overall, is the reason that we I know. believe in the Quran as a total, apart but, from the contradictions, <laughs> apart from the message that was sent to Muhammad, there's not anything in the Quran that would be morally wrong. Yes, I know. Us, and at least. So if you were to put that in hard, there, it would change the whole the question. Yeah. religion as a whole. I'm aware. This is begging the question. I'm, I'm asking you to think hypothetically. If it did say that, would it be moral? If it said in the Quran to do like, that again, it, it but it doesn't. Yeah, I know it, it does. Like, but if it did, would it be would it be moral? So I'm, I'm, it's I'm a getting, hypothetical. I'm David, it's a point. hypothetical. Thank God we can say it's a hypothetical because it's not real. So Alhamdulillah, it doesn't say that. It yeah, would be a problem. Okay, so I, I'm getting you to bite the same uncomfortable bullet that I just bit, right? Like I don't want to. Hey, I, I can answer you, David. I can answer you. Okay. If in the Quran it stated it that it would, would it be moral? Yes. But at okay. the same time, at the same time, 
on this planet, would there be millions of people having relations with their sons? One. If in the Quran it stated that that's something that you can do, would not a big chunk of the world be practicing this thing then? If it, um, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not saying that the Quran does say this. I'm just no, I'm not saying you don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm just adding to hypothetical. I'm, I'm adding oh, to your hypothetical. So think... if there was a Quran that said yeah. in there that you can do these things to your sons, right? If that well, yeah. existed, then as a nation, as a planet, would there be a lot of incest going on? I don't think so, because I think that Quran wouldn't be as much of a big a religion that it is. I think the reason why Quran, the um, Islam is such a big religion is because that it's 600 years ahead of Christianity and 1,200 years uh, ahead of Judaism. In regards I, disagree. To its moral- I disagree. The reason why I disagree, I disagree is people would practice, even though if they're following a wrong faith, they would still follow their faith. We can very easily, through conversation, prove that the Christian belief system whether through scripture or through church tradition, there are holes in the narrative. We can very easily like, prove it. We can like, easily yeah, prove it. But we can prove like, that with at, the... Hmm? Yeah, well, we can can very I easy... add to that question about the world doing uh, what that said, if it did say that? Is that, if, is that okay if I intervene for a second? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, go for gold. Hey, hey, I'm not... So I'm, that, I'm that... Sexism. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> David. I'm that awful. Kind of hey, the I'm a That kind of brings us to the situation of men being allowed to have four wives, right? So hypothetically, if what you were saying is in the Quran, I don't think that it would be as popular as other things in the Quran when it comes to things that we're allowed to do that are not commanded to do. Like the hijab, it is commanded to wear the hijab. It is mandatory in Islam for a woman to cover her hair. Is it mandatory for a man to have four wives? No, it is not. Is it permissible? Yes. yes. But most of the Muslim population do not have four wives because with the option of having four wives, you have to support all of them equally. You have to treat them all equally, which for most men, that is impossible. You also have to be financially stable to support all of them 100% without asking any of them for financial support. So if it was in the Quran, I don't think it would be as popular of an option just because it wouldn't fit a lot of people's morales, if that makes sense. I guess, yeah, I, I, you're yeah, totally dude, oh, right. Holy shit, honeybee, you just said it perfectly. It didn't fit other people's morales. I, that's exactly what I believe. People operate within their own... Options. That's exactly what I believe. People operate within their own preferences. They don't look at their holy book and go, this is what, what right and wrong is. They have an underlying like inner thing that, that ha- is happening inside them that's built off their their religion, the society, what they're taught well, no, going on. Well, well, I'm not no. saying that they say it's right or wrong. I might have reworded that last sentence not to the right. best of my abilities. I'm not saying that it's different between right and wrong. I'm saying a lot of people do not have the ability of creating that option or a lot of people might just not pick that option something that's permissible there's a lot of things that are permissible in islam that not everybody chooses to do and vice versa for me like i said i think i think it's it's not because we think it's bad it's just that some people just don't want to do it it doesn't mean that we see it as a bad thing it's just some people choose not to do it it's just really up to the individual it's it's still morally right according to islam would it be be moral for you to take four wives yeah, of course it's morally right, hundred percent. And if I could do it, I would do it. And I'm saying that right here, right now, I will take. If I could afford it, I would probably take six. <laughs> okay. Someone, someone just mentioned in the chat, by the way, to stop cussing. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Um, for no, cussing. That's fine, David. Uh, Aussies, right. I know um, you, bro. That's what Aussies do. Uh, we cuss a lot. That's Aussies, man. <laughs> no bad habits, and, man. Or someone said before that um, you need to be more like the British. Okay, nice and polite. Come on. Sorry. <laughs> also in the chat before. Right. Um, Judaism right. and go back to Adam six thousand years ago. That's not true. The first mention of Israel is um, the Emeptus deal in in twelve hundred. Yes, in Egypt. The Meneptus, Yeah, the Meneptus Stella. I saw that one. Yeah. Yeah. I think you it's do a- very well in our religious debate against christians maybe you should hop on again in the future <laughs> <laughs> yeah well the thing is so i was having a conversation i was having a conversation with um and look i i hope you don't this doesn't turn defensive or, or whatever maybe we can go back to morality but i was having a conversation with a couple of muslims on here the other day um and i didn't know you guys were muslims but so the thing and i didn't know if you're christian or atheist or whatever um but they they said to me 
that there were no his um, there were no um, scientific inaccuracies in the Quran, and that's why it's should be trusted. And so I was like, okay, and I didn't know, I didn't know about this, and I was like, okay, and so I I was like I was thinking because I read the Quran once, and it was a beautiful book. I got the um, uh, I got this translation. Um, mass. That one. So I got the Arabic and the um, the the English next to each other, and it's by a professor. Um, but anyway, it's it was beautiful, and um, and I said, well, doesn't the Quran say that the, you know that the moon was split into two? And I know that you guys are going to be itching because there's like a million apologetics that you've got for this, but like I just asked a simple question of like, like do we have any sources outside of the Quran and that one source from India where a king? Um, supposedly saw that the moon's splitting and there's a lot of, you know, if if that was a real, like, there's a lot of, it's a contested claim, but yeah. is there any, like, other sources around the world that saw the moon split at the same time? To me, that that would be a huge red flag. It's, That'd be like having exactly. a global flood. Like, how Christians yeah, said there was a global flood and then nothing, and no, just no, no, China didn't notice, Egypt didn't notice. Like a hunt, bunch of different civilizations went on fine. Australian Aboriginals who've lived there for forty thousand years didn't notice. Like that, that's like when the Christians say that. Like, no, did, the hadith, the so, hadith is so a source we, of information. The hadith is a source of information we can derive off. I mean, it's eyewitness accounts. Like even people that weren't even in Mecca that testified to seeing the moon split. The thing is, this was a night event. This wasn't a day event. So majority, the, majority, first of all, the majority of people would be would have been sleeping. And anyone that was running around saying, I saw the moon split, I saw the moon split early in the morning, it's going to be like the boy cries wolf, really. And it, remember this. It's, we, this we, the thing we is, have, if you're gonna, have sorry, one second, brother. One second, David, sorry. If yeah. you're going to base the moon splitting off of empirical evidence, remember, this is an axiom. So an ax, you know what an axiom is? It's basically something that is, it's something, it's, it physically happened, but it's something that is a part of the supernatural. So it's really, you can't really say it actually did happen or not happen. What I'm saying, it did happen. According to the sources of the hadith, that it said it did happen and the one accounts from India, which is a contest, contested topic, but I, I don't know. It's obviously, it's going to get contested if someone is from India saying the moon split. But it's just, it's interesting. Hmm? Have you heard of the thought experiment of, um, I think it's Carl Sagan, who talks about the invisible dragon living in your garage? I didn't hear that, no. So, so it's like the it, like spaghetti monster, right? So same sort of thing. No, not necessarily. It's a bit different. So it's so say that I I say to you guys, I say, hey, I've got a I've got an invisible dragon in my garage. I've got a dragon in my garage. And you guys go, oh, that's amazing. I nearly swore again. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Let's go <laughs> check it out. And... Um, I bring you to the, the garage and I go, here it is. And you guys go, I don't see anything. I go, oh, the, the dragon's actually invisible. And you guys go, you guys go, oh, okay. Well, let's put some, let's let's touch the dinosaur, uh, the dragon, sorry. And then you go around it and you try and touch the dragon. And I go, oh, actually, it flies around the room every time and it avoids you guys touching it. And then you guys go, okay, well, why don't we put like fan on the floor, or, like powder on the floor so we can see its footsteps. And I say, well, actually, this type of... Um, of dragon it actually steps on 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 it doesn't c connect with anything when it steps around and it's like okay and then eventually you keep making like th thing after thing after thing after thing and then until eventually like the 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 reality of a dragon being in the garage versus the dragon not being in the garage looks exactly the same there is there is absolutely nothing no nothing that we can see or do or tell to just to um verify either way so when it comes to like the moon splitting in two if you say okay well the moon's splitting two but no one saw it around the world because they were all sleeping or they didn't see it or it was hearsay and the um and it was also supernatural so it was all covered up that's essentially the same thing there's no way to verify it there's no way to unverify it it's it's okay. it, the moon splitting well, in two it's well, just like one moon, moon okay. splitting in two. Well, but the hadith is a way of verification. I mean, it's historical evidence. I mean, hadith is not just any book written by some man. It's historical accounts, really. And it's not like the Bible where it's oh, just historical accounts. Like John, you know, John was an author, and that's basically it. Because John shouldn't even be, remember, John shouldn't even be a bloody author in the bible since he's actually illiterate according to acts 413 but what we have is chain of well, narration we, it's, it's worse than that it's anonymous the, the gospel of john exactly. is it's anonymous. anonymous yeah exactly how can john write 
the Bible, um, the Gospel of John, when he was illiterate himself. So that just leads to say, hmm, all right, then it must have been from someone else. But that's apart from the discussion. Yeah. What I'm trying to get back to is basically what we have at the, is the chain of narration. And these are backed up with people. We know who they are. We have their biography. They're real people that existed throughout history. So all these different things is what I'm saying. So it's because look, at the end of the day, we can say the same thing about um, Abraham Lincoln. How do we know he existed? We know he mm. existed due to the simple fact that we have accounts that predate back then. Do people from Australia know about Abraham Lincoln? No. Or maybe they did, but there was no probably evidence to suggest otherwise because it was so long ago or whatever. There was no accounts here. But we're talking about the accounts that happened around Arabia. So obviously you can't say, oh, there was accounts there or there, but really at the end of the day, it's... So wouldn't, it's a, wouldn't, those, mm. wouldn't the people writing the Hadiths have like have uh like wouldn't they wouldn't it be in their best interest to write that the moon did split they did yeah yeah but, but that's what, wouldn't it be in but their they best could have wrote but they but then they could have wrote other things that would have equally added yeah. gravitas to the claim like so they could have know, made up absurdities yeah but you know how i i know but you know how like christians will say um well the new testament fulfills the old testament prophecies and it's like did the Christians mm -hmm. writing the New Testament have access to the Old Testament prophecies? So even if they did, yeah. it's not that a miracle. And then, but then, like, if you go into and like, I hate to to kind of dogpile on my like thoughts, and I'm I hope this isn't coming off as disrespectful, but like, no, no, it's fine. we have like, a million people went to Safra Sai Baba's birthday in 1984. A million people, Safra Sai Baba. He was a barber in in India, and yeah, there were. There were multiple accounts multiple accounts of him raising people from the dead um predicting his return saying he's like a, a, a religious leader um and we, we don't take these like we, none of us here take him seriously even though four people have been, yeah okay? so here's what we do then who are these people that make this claim the, so the people that make, 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 what's their biography they? exactly yeah, so we, we that's yeah. what the hadiths are. We go into the biography of who these people are. Are they truthful or not? Will they make um, yeah. stuff up? Like, that's that's how deep the science of hadith is. We have videos of him, uh, like, doing miracles. Video evidence of this. Now, I don't believe yeah. it. I think it's, I think it's BS. But he had a million people who did believe it and followed him and witnessed to his miracles and saw these things and saw him raise four people from the dead. I think it was even seven, but four are fully attested to by multiple witnesses. Um, so, so to me, I go like, okay, well, if we're going to take the resurrection account or the, the resurrect or the account of Muhammad splitting the moon from these, um, these followers of the religion, why can't we do the same with Sathra Sai Baba? Well, it wasn't even <laughs> coming from In the, the 80s. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't even... It wasn't even coming from the Muslims themselves. It was coming from even the enemies of Islam that witnessed the account. Because it was, it, eventually it was, the story behind it was the enemies of Islam said, okay, if you're really the prophet, go split the moon. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did pray. And then subhanAllah, the moons did split for a few hours, then went back together. It was just, يعني, that's what happened. And then what ended up happening was even when the disbelievers saw what happened, they, they were like, Here's another. Didn't Here's another. this was magic. They said there's this another was magic. Thing. One thing, David, one thing. So then what the enemies of Islam eventually did was they came around and they um, not came around to accepting what happened, but they went because there was merchants coming from other parts of Arabia, you know, merchants going around selling stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so they came in and the enemies said, did you see the moon split? And a lot of these people testified, yes, I saw the moon split. So a lot of these different people who saw what happened, it's crazy. And I get where you're coming from with your argument, but yeah. this is at yeah. the end of the day. This is, at the end of the day, narrations and eyewitness accounts, and it's the best thing we can do. I mean, no one back then had a phone and started filming the moon. You know, and, and back then, it was the time as well. So it's, it's, it's problematic because you can't say, oh, I can't trust it because I wasn't there or because it could have been after. But that's, that's an assumption. You're basing that argument off an assumption. What if it was like this? But then I can say, to the contrary, well, I believe it's like this. So it's really, it's a he but and she can... said, and it's... it's yeah. Yeah. It's an you argument. can make that claim. I think you, you just can make that. You can religion. make that claim. You can make that claim to every event that's ever happened in history. Mm, you know, yeah. is that exactly how it happened? Let me just give me just one hadith before I just go back to a main point that I want to discuss. 
Mm. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had a son called Ibrahim. Okay. And he passed away. Okay. Now, when he died, this is a hadith, by the way, an eclipse took place. Okay. Now, when this eclipse took place, everyone was like, wow, his son has died. And look, this eclipse has happened. He must be hey a guy. Prophet. Sorry to intervene. I'm going to hop down. Home, okay. So I'm gonna okay, go. It's not talking to you, honey, but take care, my sister. So, so, this eclipse, yeah, sorry. so this eclipse, this eclipse then happens, and obviously, then people make the claim, Wow, look, this eclipse happened. This man, he must be a prophet because look, his son has died, an eclipse took place. Prophet Muhammad found out about this and he got very angry and he went to the people and he said, The moon goes by its own. Whatever it behaves, it behaves. It's got nothing to do with people living and dying. It's got nothing to do with this. One would assume if you was a charlatan that you would say, yeah, look, definitely see, look, my son is dead. And look, an eclipse has happened. I must be a god. I must be a prophet or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. But he corrects the people saying, no, this has got nothing to do with this. I think this is why I was when we were talking about this subject matter, my brother, because you have to realize if there's a creator and he made the moon and he created the universe, he can cause the moon to split. Oh, All of right? course. He can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah? I agree with that. So there, but, there's no there's nothing there's this is a metaphysical thing. But, and he there are no laws of physics when it comes to a creator. He made the laws of physics. Okay. Yeah. So he can bend them as he chooses. So that's why we'll, Yeah. Becomes, so when we talk about just prove so anything. It yeah, it doesn't. So it's true because you just point to supernatural. So if I say, "Well, the Quran says that the moon actually like sheds its own light," you'll say, "Well, actually, um, that's be, you know that was for a time, or that was you know a translation for this, or maybe it does shed its own light, and God can do anything." Like, like no matter what I come up with, no matter what problems I have with the Quran, you'll say that you have um, like that super like the, the the supernatural clause gets you out of it. But that's the no, thing. No, no, what you'll have, have, you'll have, well, hold on. You'll have meta you'll have metaphysical things happen and you're gonna have physical things happen. Like remember, Islam is not only based on basically physical evidences. We don't I don't say the Quran is the Quran because look, hey, it's scientifically not inaccurate. I'm not gonna go like that. There's more things to the Quran beyond just the scientific. You got prophet you got prophetical miracle prophetic miracles, you've got linguistic miracles in Arabic, obviously not in English, you've got the Obviously, the scientific miracles, the preservation of the Quran, the way it's been memorized all around the world. It's the most memorized book. We can agree on that. No one has memorized the, Quran, the book more than the Quran. So you've got all these different miracles that I can mention and just go like that. But then really, at the end of the day, not everything is based on empirical evidence. Remember, there's, if you're going into a religion, there's going to be metaphysical things and physical things. It's, it's just up to you whether you want to base if you want to believe in the things that are basically a part of the yeah. supernatural. But as I said earlier, if you want to believe in a religion, you have to first base the, the foundation is the logic. As I said, it's the logic first, then you build the faith upon it. You can't just have like, as I said, yeah. you can't start Christianity is just based on faith Then everything else is after, which even then that's a crumbling tower in itself. But you want to mm. base something logic first, see if it actually goes past through the check. Then once you get that done, you build faith upon it. Faith, 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 and then that's how you go. So me, really, I have, lo like, the logic in the Quran, it's indisputable. I've read it all, and I'm David, like, you can't. Because even David, you, again, you just said David, right? Okay, if, because again, the whole clux of this conversation, and I know we went into theology, this is why I didn't want to go into theology, because this is when, when we talk, it's problematic, because you're like, oh, can this happen? Can this happen? Can this happen? But you have to admit if there is a creator, he can do what he wants. So the yeah. whole purpose of it. So, yeah. So then, again, we're going back to that, that the, the start of this conversation then. Is mm -hmm. there a creator? Because if there is, there's, there's no impossibilities. If he can make the universe, he can make the moon break and take it back. Either, he can do it. Okay. So that, that's what, what it's based upon. I know how you, you think. You want to discuss theology and build through that. But you, you have to you first, mean, is there a creator? And then base build from there. Do, um, yeah, I understand where you I understand what where you're coming from, but um um so do, with with the Quran, 
why why did Muhammad write the Quran? Just just like briefly, quickly. Can I can I explain this, David? So yeah. Muhammad didn't write the Quran. So what we believe, and we say this full confidently, it was authored by Allah. So the author of the Quran is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then it was there was a middleman who was Gabriel. Gabriel went down to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would get revelation. Then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa would speak revelation. Once he would speak the revelation, people would memorize the revelation. And then basically some of them would write it down in different places. Once Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, everyone got around. And basically they wrote down the Quran physically and then made it into the book that it is today, alhamdulillah, which has no discrepancies in it or anything because we know who... Because the reason why we know it has no discrepancies in it is because with each verse, we have every single person that memorized each verse that placed it into the Quran in that perfect order. So it's not like he said, she said anything. It's all chain of narration. Every single verse in the Quran is all um, has a chain of narration from who memorized it from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's how I can sum it up to you, basically. So, but why? Why was it written? Why? Okay, so why is the Quran existed? Is that what you're asking? Like the what, Quran like, what, what more, I'm more asking what was God's purpose in writing or in, in, in asking for the Quran to be written? Basically, it's an instruction manual for all of humanity to follow as a moral compass. So we have these moral objectives, as we said, we have these moral objectives. You don't have it, but me and Dao, mm -hmm. we live on objective morality, basically in a way where it guides us. So it stops us from drinking alcohol, from having sex before marriage, astaghfirullah from gambling, from interest, okay. from anything else. It stops us from doing these things just to protect us. And it's if something like this exists, then it must be of a divine origin. Because back then during the time mm. of it's the reason why I say it's of a divine origin is because the linguistic miracles of the Quran in Arabic out surpasses any literature throughout it, history. And I say that confidently. I don't give a sh about Shakespeare, I don't give a damn about any other person. This is beyond any other literature, and I'm saying that confidently and I there, I, I actually challenge you to disprove it. I, I challenge I've, anyone. I have actually heard that uh, the Quran in Arabic or it's original Arabic, or yeah, Arabic, Arabic. Arabic sorry. <laughs> no, I'm good. I, I can drink, and I have been drinking, so I apologize if I'm. But um, oh, the so I've heard that it's it's beautiful, um, like and it's and its structure is just amazing. Um, but mm. back to my question, um. <laughs> yeah. So, if God can, so can people choose to disobey the Quran if they yes, know what it yes. says? Yes, we so, have free will. Do you believe in so free will? We have free will. Yeah. So why write down something when we know that most of the people at the time were illiterate, and a lot of people in the world today are illiterate? Why not just? Why didn't God just, Allah just give everyone these morals? So in their because heart, the they thing, knew what we was have right that, and wrong. We have that. And we have that in Islam is called the fitra. It's called the so fitra. What, so we all know it. What I'm saying is, why couldn't why couldn't you know how you know how when like a um, a giraffe is born and it knows how to walk straight away, like why Allah, couldn't yeah. why couldn't we be born and know all the Quran straight away? Because the thing is, remember this: because the world is a test. The world is a test. It's not a place of heaven because that's what people think. People think this place is the end all, be all. They think this is where we're going to come and this is where we're going to die and there's nothing after, which mm -hmm. is unfortunately not the news. There is more after this life because our purpose in this life is to worship the creator. And there's obviously other different purposes you can put in your life. You know, you want to buy a house, that can be one. But the main purpose of this life is basically, it's, it's a test. And each individual yeah. will have their own test. So for example, if a man has never heard of Islam or has never ever basically come near Islam and lives in the middle of nowhere, basic, and or even heard of religion in general, he'll have his own test. If there was a person that was born with a disability that, that can't think straight, he will have his own test, but he's not going to hell. A lot of people that have a disability in Islam will go straight to heaven, no questions asked because they're not able to think properly. So everyone has their own test. If you've heard of Islam and you rejected it, you will get your own test. If you've um, if you were an Islamophobe and you hated Islam and you were on the news talking trash about Islam, you have your own test. So everyone will have their own individual test. And for example, we can't, because if basically, for example, if Allah was to have given us all this information, at the end of the day, it wouldn't be free will. It's, it's He's enforcing something upon us, which 
would it be right if you get what but I mean? It, he, he would be enforcing but, the sentiment that, that wouldn't be right. It would still be free because you just said before that we can choose to disobey it. So it, it's just that. Mm. So I'm not asking that people are forced to make a decision. I'm just mm. asking why couldn't people be born with the knowledge that if they do make these wrong decisions and they don't pray five times a day and they don't, you know, um, follow, go to Mecca and, and follow the laws of the Quran, um, like why, why couldn't people be born just knowing that? It seems like it would, it would, it would stop a lot of confusion, a lot of hate, a lot of pain in the world. But how can you, how do you know? How do you know then you would follow those instructions? I, I might not, but, but my point right. is that at least then everyone would know what was right and wrong without having to um, trust a book from a what? from a culture that's not even theirs. Well, so then we don't have free will. Then, then we don't have free will. You've taken free will out of the equation. Then no, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm just. I'm. I'm. So wait. So. It's like, yeah. I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Hold on. I get what you mean. It's like you booted up the computer, you booted up the computer, and it already has all the files there that you need to know. It already has Windows installed. Yeah, right? Windows installed. You don't have to install anything. It's got everything there. Everything that you want is already there. So, for example, imagine you love playing COD and Fortnite, all these different things. It's already there before you even know. So, basically, you know, it's like, I get what you mean. But in a sense, that would take free will away because it's already being pushed onto you. And not only that, though, it, in a sense, well, it not... would take away. It would take away from the actual test, as I said. You get what I mean? Because remember, this world is a test. Yeah, what David, the world's a test. But, but, yeah, what David but... is saying is, you have that information, but then you have the choice to accept it or reject it. Yeah, I get. I, I get what he's saying, but that in itself would be problematic because if everyone knew, if everyone had that information installed in their head then everyone, I reckon, would start submitting to the Creator. Because then everyone's going to be like, holy crap, I know all these different things in the Qur'an. So everyone will come to the general consensus. This must be the Creator. This must be Allah. So I'm, I would, because this is the thing. The beauty, the beautiness of life is everyone has their different opinions and different ways of going about it. That's the beautiness of life. But if you take that away by putting a religion straight away into your head from the minute that you're born, then that's a big problem. Because then everyone, like, imagine you were, born david with uh with islam and then that person was born and that person was born and everyone around the world was born with islam everyone would agree that islam is the truth therefore everyone would start worshiping the creator and that would take mm. away from the free will and the the choice no, that you have in islam have, because yeah you said before that they could they still have the choice to disobey no no true, so they, still true. The they would still have the choice to disobey but in a hypothetical realm people would be smart enough to know that this is the truth if it's all in your head and then would be like, okay, we all have to come to the consensus that this is the ultimate truth because we're already born with it. So people would all start saying, hey, listen, we need to start praying to the creator. So in a sense, it will, it won't take away from the free will. Okay, you're right. It won't take away from the free will, but I guess it would remove the point of the test, if you know what I mean. It would remove the, the point of the test. The faith, the test, everyone would be like, well, we already know this exists because we all have that fitra, that all that um Quran in our head. You get what I mean? Mm. It just seems so, a lady yeah. called. It seems like a so weird, lady called. People have to a lady look, called. Read. Wait, da'wa, da'wa, wait. Let David finish, and then you can respond after. I, I was just going to say, it just made, it feels like a weird step to make people learn how to read, and then obviously there are a lot of um, you know, Islamic scholars who disagree with the Quran being translated into other languages outside of Arabic because it's God's direct word. So they they have issues. Some scholars have issues with that, right? Like I'm, I'm some do surely. I've heard some. some. I, I never, I never heard any scholars say that there was a problem with it. No scholars ever said that. No scholars ever said that. So, no, okay. no scholars ever said that. You not, make some very not, interesting. Yeah. You make some very interesting points. And um, I mean, one, one thing that we have to understand is when you when you use the concept of if someone is born with knowledge in their head, you have to memorize, you have to understand that that in itself is a problematic sort of system because, again, you're not developed to the stage. You know, It's like saying, why are children not born with the ability to be able to just read or count or do anything? If you don't have the rational or the physical well, what capability... About, like do you have? Do you guys have the age of accountability in Islam? Yes, after puberty. Yeah, puberty. That's puberty. Yeah, so let's say let's say that that first. Oh, I won't say that. I was going to make a joke about puberty, but let's say um, 
let's say, um, you know, that, you, you know, you go through puberty and the process of going through puberty, the hadiths and the Quran, the message, the overall message, and, the, and you know what's right and wrong comes onto your heart and your mind. What will be the issue with that? Well, that that's, take away that's from it will take away from the test. It will take away from this. And anyways, I would argue that we already know what's right and wrong, unless you grew up in a really messed up household. Everyone grew up with knowing what is right and what is wrong. Like people, well, like not I, everyone, but there's a few individuals. But everyone knows what's no, right so and wrong. Like, a, if that so was the case, wearing the hadith outside of Islam. Uh, he, uh, yeah, hadith. Hijab. Hijab. Sorry. Yeah. If that's the case, yeah. you'd see more people, more women outside of Islam wearing the hijab. If they what knew do you mean by and it's moral, it's immoral for a woman not to wear hijab. You should, no, but, shouldn't you? Shouldn't no, you no, see a woman? A woman. No, no. The thing is, it's not fitra in the sense where it's strong fitra, like in the case of Islam. But they know it's deep down that it's wrong. Like a woman going to the beach, showing off her bosoms and all these different things. Deep down, they know this is wrong and it's not going to be yeah, right but, because. But the woman showing but, her hair. Like, are you saying that, like in ancient China? Um, women were like, I should cover up my my hair. Like, why weren't women covering up their hair in ancient China? Because they had this moral obligation put on their heart, which was the, which was Islam's, um, which was. You know, it's yeah. not put on the heart. It's not put on the heart. That's that's taught through theology. No, no, well, you're not yeah. gonna. We don't we don't yeah. subscribe to. Okay, we okay. So there was a study done in 2012. Okay, by a man called Justin L. Barrett. Okay. And yeah. he took, I think, about five, six, eight hundred children and they did experiments, okay, to see. And they found, surprisingly, that a lot of them, they came from secular backgrounds, but they believed in a God, right? Or how they sort of perceived their origins where they came from, right? They believed that they were created. They believed this world was created. And these are children that came from secular backgrounds. So even they, like I said, the st study was done in 2012 by a guy called Justin L. Barrett, if I'm not mistaken. Now, we have in Islam something known as the fitra. Now, the fitra is not knowing Islam A to Z and all the guides, but just to give you a basic premise of rights and wrongs. Not just this, but it's also based on instincts. Okay, So a child that's been in his mother's womb for nine months never has put anything to his lips. But as soon as he's born, mummy grabs him presents her, her breast and he knows the child knows to suckle it how it's never done this thing before okay so it knows how to do that if it's distressed it cries out when it's a bit older daddy maybe pulls a face it smiles this this you know reaction to what's happening you know these are our instincts and these come from our fitra and along with this is to identify that there is a creator now, then it's up to you and not depending on our social circumstances and where life takes us you know, where, what our families sort of indoctrinate us with or what we learn from society, you know. Now, in Islam, up to a point prior to puberty, you're innocent, okay? So that's why in in Christianity, especially Catholicism, you have the concept of being baptized. So, and some believe if you don't get baptized, you're going to go to hell because you've got this original sin on you. You've got to get rid of it, okay? Uh, but for us in Islam, it doesn't matter what background you're from. You could be the child of an atheist family. You die in Islam, that he's unaccountable. He's a child. He's going to go to heaven. He's got no issues. But yes, once you get to that age of puberty, yes, this is maybe going to be a time whereby you are now accountable to find the information. Now, your pathway may be different. My pathway was different. I was not Muslim. Okay. But I, I discovered Islam through my own experiences in life, me going through things, me questioning. Again, we were talking about morality, talking about our existence, our purpose, you know, these things. And they may lead you to get this information, to find this information. Equally, there are people that are born in Muslim families that don't really acknowledge their belief, like this beautiful brother when he explained his, his story, right? So just because you're born in a Muslim family doesn't mean you're going to be a practicing Muslim, all right? You may deviate or you may... Make up, or you yeah, may wish not to take it on. I guess you that's know? kind of my, but 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 like, so do you believe? Uh, I'm learning a lot, by the way. This is really interesting for me, I, and I hope it's right. interesting for you. But is, <laughs> I'm is, glad you're learning a lot. It's better than talking to a Christian, that's for sure. <laughs> so is um, so is so are all children, um, 
uh, like all children, even non-Muslim children, like do they go to heaven? Like a a okay? Yeah. yeah. In our belief so, system, yes. In Islam, they are in the hadith. Again, we're going to go back to a hadith. Prophet Muhammad taught us this. Children are unaccountable, or what they say, the pen is taken away from them because they're innocent. Plus, so, they're a product of their conditioning. You know, a Christian's going to raise their child as a Christian. That's not their fault. They're in this me, scenario, but up me, until the point me, of accountability, to me, they're, they're really, to me, that's a really scary thought, actually, because like, there was there was a case in I think I think it was 2012 where there was a Christian woman. Obviously, she was mentally insane. But she was Christian and she was so convinced that the world could corrupt her children that she chose to drown all four of her children in a bathtub. Wow. That's not nice, isn't those. She, she, decided to risk, she decided to risk her life and risk the fact that she knew she was probably going to hell if it meant that her four children could go to heaven. And she's, yeah. Me, but she's justified the, murder there. She's just a, but yeah. murder in her belief is, is also forbidden. Yeah, well, it's in a lot of religions, there's a lot of murder. I'm just saying. And yeah, there is some But to me, that logic, the logic that comes from that, even though it's a, it's a, it's a sin. I'm assuming in Islam to murder. Um, the logic that comes from that is, wouldn't it be because if you don't kill your child but, or kill all children before the age of accountability, you're risking them going to hell. Which is the worst possible place. But ever. the thing is, you're committing murder and you're taking away the test that was set up for them. I get what you mean. You're pulling a Thanos now, like, oh, you know, <laughs> for your salvation, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna kill you, then you go straight. Like I get it. You're doing you're doing good. I, I while would be like bad. I would be like Jesus. I'd be sacrificing myself, right? I'd be going to hell myself, <laughs> make sure millions of children that I murder get to go to heaven. Right. What view you're presenting the, now? The biggest sacrifice ever. That, that would be like the only. You're presenting a view now. Okay, you're presenting a view now. Okay, you. But you're presenting a view now by people that subscribe to nihilism, and it has gone to the extent where they've become an, anti-natalists. So these are the people that think no one should yeah. have children because they are, um, you're entering them into a life where there's lots of suffering, and you are responsible for this because you've brought them into existence. I mean, yeah. that's true. I find it, it, I find it very yeah. interesting, but it's, in a sense, you're still going your to child, hell for that. And I, yeah, but, I your child that. Could, but your child could cure cancer. You don't know that. How do you know what their future is in store? What, what do you know is going to yeah. happen to them in the future? But out well, of the chance, the way how dark this place is and has gotten, there's a lot of chance of them not because of how this place is going. It's really dark here. Yeah. Well, that's why well, in Islam, well, you're, well, you're well, told well, to bring up your children. Not told. This is experience. Don't tell. Don't assume that everybody just been told something. People, all of us have been experiencing a lot of dark shit. One thing, um, Angel, you're you're echoing a little bit. Can I just drop you down? It's starting to. It's you. You have really loud noise. Can I just drop you down okay. if you don't mind? Well, I'll bring you up after. All right. All right thanks. Thanks, Angel. Sorry. Sorry, mate. But David, yeah, yeah. you do make, no, you do make an interesting point. Point. But, that, but then you have the free will to have children or not have children. So, you know, that that's, again, uh, that, that is a great view that you brought to the table. You know, the life is, you know, difficult and there's lots going on. But equally, you don't know what, what's in store for yourself, let alone your children. So I think this is an extreme circumstance where a person has obviously just lost their mind. And, of you know, this is not the I mean, solution. Murder is the not guy, the solution. The guy is basically yeah. acting like Thanos. You know, you wipe out half the universe just to save the other half. It's 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 messed up. Like I get it. It's it sounds pleasing, but then at what cost? Killing innocent well, babies that log- have a life to live. It logically works. That's what's scary about it. I know it logically works, but it's it really it, it works. And you're right. But it's wrong. It it's a, it how does it work? It how does it work? If he, if people stop having children, how does that work? Exactly, because then if people stop having children at the end of the day, the world will die off as well. Exactly. I get so it's not... Surely I get we should make the world a better place. Surely of let's course. make the world a better place. Yeah, that, that's the solution. Uh, I see I'm where not... he's coming from. I see where he's coming from. But it's it's like a Thanos. It's, it, you're pulling a Thanos, yeah, yeah. mate. Like, it's I, messed I up. That's a bit extreme. 
<laughs> yeah, surely maybe the world is a bit overpopulated. <laughs> but yeah, that's the logical extension of that age of accountability, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's the age, that's the logical extension of hell, heaven, and the age of accountability. Like, because because I can't imagine. Like, if I really believe, if I truly believe that if I let my child live, right? Let's say I didn't murder them. Let's just say I just did a lot of risky um, activities. Like, so we went and climbed Mount Everest when he was three, and then like we jumped out of a, a plane every Sunday. Like, we did as much risky behavior as possible because I knew that as soon as he became uh, of age, there was a risk that he could go to hell. Oh, geez, like there was no way you'd ever want your your children to get to puberty because there's a risk that they could go to hell. It's gone from zero percent chance to anything but, 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 over zero. That's up to you. But that's, but that's up brother, to you as an individual. You have to raise them well. You have to raise them well to have a strong mind. You you can't raise them exactly. in a sense. You have to be strict as a parent because remember, at the end of the day, your child is your responsibility. This is your um, like this is an extension of yourself. So it's but you, me, you but have, there's yeah, a zero percent chance. Even if you raise the but best kid, have... there's more than zero percent chance they're going to hell. Don't have babies because, then. But, <laughs> don't have well, no, no. I want to have kids, but I just want to make sure they're dead and go to heaven with me, <laughs> right? But the, the, so biggest, the, the biggest thing there then, the biggest there then for that person who believes in the theology to then make sure that theology that he is subscribed and is going to teach to his children can stand up to scrutiny. Yeah. Right? So then, so then at least you've done your homework. So I mean, every one of us have got a history. We've been brought up by parents, by society. It's up to us to sometimes sit and question. You know, that's why we have debates. We have conversations on our stream, on our channel. We talk to people. Christians come and they bring their arguments. And and a lot of it is emotional because when we open the book and we talk theology properly, we bring out the verses, you know, they don't want to know. There is not a single yeah. verse in the Bible that Jesus says he is God. Like, clearly, nothing. Not a single verse where he says it. Yet everyone believes he's God. Why? I mean, because really this is you know, well, you can't, then, then, it's, then it's a delusion because be, it, it doesn't match be, your theology. To be fair, it was really, what if you look the, at history, if you look what, at history, it was the Council of Nicaea that discussed if is the Son eternal. So really, the Trinity yeah. actually evolved in history through the church, not through the actual Bible. So everything that people believe in now is mainly through the church. I mean, the Council of Nicaea is talk, the first one. It's talking about is the Son eternal. Then Constantinople in 381 is the Holy Spirit a third person. Then in Ephesus was married the barrier of Christ's divine nature. Then in Chaldean, um, did Christ have one or two natures? So it's really, if you look into it, a lot of these Christians, they believe based off what the church teaches them. It's really not about what the Bible says. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, the, uh, point, the point I was making is, is you could you could sit down and have a very intellectual intelligent conversation where you're bringing up verses you're showing scripture you're talking history you're talking about what people did after jesus left and despite you presenting a mountain of evidence they're not willing to say you know what okay there's something not right there you know that's where you've got a problem that is where there's an issue this is the problem with theology you know that people are questioning their beliefs david uh david um let david speak I was just going to say, well, thank you. I have been talking a lot, though, so I apologize. But I, I have to say, though, like, I, and I know that I know that you won't. I, I feel like when I talk to Christians, I get the same, you know, evasiveness. You actually let way, way more evasiveness than you guys. You guys have been able to actually have conversations in hypotheticals. Christians seem to not be able to do anything hypothetically. But, um, but like, I, I find that, like I find that I, I feel like I can't present anything to you guys that you guys would accept would falsify uh, Islam. No, I, I feel like. No, uh, but, but the Quran tells you to. The Quran tells you to Quran challenge. Tells you to, yeah. It challenge. It tells you. It, tells, it legit in the second verse of the Quran. It says, "Wait, it's one second. It just says Alif Lam Mim Dalakul Kitab It means it legit says. That there is no book like it. There is no book that comes close to it. So basically, the Quran challenges you basically in the first, in this second chapter of the second verse. Yeah, but the the thing is, um, like, if I say to you now, well, like, you know, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of um, evolutionary, well, actually, 
all evolutionary biologists subscribe to that we didn't come from Adam and Eve, you would go, ah, oh, and you'd find some apologetics to make it work, right? You're not going, you're not going to. The, the better Eve. question there is, the, the, the better, okay, the better response to that is, why do you believe them? Hey. The better, if you said that to me, that they don't believe human life as we know it today stemmed from Adam and Eve, I'd ask you, why do you believe them? Yeah, and then we'd go into the question of, I can tell you that answer, but we would go into a debate about that. But that's my point, is I've just given you evidence that contradicts the Quran. And it, I know you guys will say it's not true, but I've given you evidence that contradicts the Quran. And instead of... Okay. But testimony is not... Okay, but again, what... It's not evidence, though, is it? They weren't no, there. It is. We've they tested were... it with um, E. coli, um, with Richard um, Lenski back from 1980. We have Tiktaalik, which um, was a um, fossil that we found that we, we never knew of this fossil, Tiktaalik, and we made novel testable predictions, and we discovered Tiktaalik right where we thought it was going to be after four years of ex 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 expedition. Sorry, my dog's gone crazy. Oh, like, we proven it over and it is the most com it, 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 there there is more evidence for the have theory you verified of it. have you verified their claim as far as like <laughs> i want to verify it. A lot of, sorry a lot of biologists also believe that majority of the majority of society our ancestors are actually um they did incest some form of incest that's what a lot of biologists also believe like a lot of back then was incest a lot of incest that was happening. And in a sense, it's what led to us being here now. So for me, I could say because there was incest, it could lead to Adam, alayhi salam, Adam and Eve happening. So I could use that as an argument as well, based sure. on what the Quran says. So it the could go both ways anyway. I think the conversation... Yeah, is even, Sorry. Mr. Shreda, just let David speak and then you can but, respond. Sure. Yeah. I hear what you're saying there. And there are, there are apologists who try and do that. One of my favorites is Inspiring Philosophy, who's a theistic evolutionist. But he, but the problem with that is um, you, you're, not got, like, uh, you're still not going to get to 300,000 years ago, right? Like Adam and Eve would have lived still 6,000 years ago, wherever. I don't know what Islam believes, but it wouldn't be 300,000 years ago. We don't know. And there was like over, there was over 124,000 prophets that were sent, so it could have been a very long time span. Yeah, well, then, but evolution's uh, even means, longer than that. Evolution's millions and billions of years. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, if that's the case. Then you, 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 you're much more closer than um than Christianity, anyway. In Judy, <laughs> right? Um, but I, I guess what I'm trying to say, my brother, and again, not you. Not, like I said, I have to compliment you on your manners. You're you're very well presented, and you're very well spoken. And clearly, you've done a lot of research. But what I'm saying is, is that there just seems to be this attitude where certain people in coats will present something and we're more likely to believe it but we're not doing any of the we're not verifying what they're saying at yeah, all. I know what you're saying I, I know what you're saying but the problem is like and, and the, there is way there are i got two parts can i sorry can i reply i know what you're saying there are two parts to this though there's one is i could say the same about islam you didn't speak to Gabriel. You're just hearing it from the Quran, right? So, like, you could go back as far as that. And secondly, there are ways that we can actually demonstrate this ourselves. So I have a, well, she's not a friend, but I've spoken to her. Um, she's a primatologist, and she literally studies, like, how um, Neanderthals mated with humans. And she has literally grabbed someone I know's head because they found out they had Neanderthal DNA and found a spot in the back of their head and pointed to it and said, see this? And it was a lump that they had that no one else had and said, this little line here is only on 5% of people who have Neanderthal DNA in them. So, like, for someone to be able to pull out, like, like no, I guess I haven't, like, gone to the ground and, and dug up, like, fossils myself and then carbon date and, like, you know, radiometric data to them and then do all that stuff. But we make... That's so right. many novel testable predictions, and it would be a okay. huge conspiracy of every scientist in the world to, to like, to, for this to be wrong. But what scientist says a hundred percent? There's no God. No, no, no scientist makes any. No well, so then, so then, yeah, so then, so that again, so what? Your here's the difference, my brother. 
the people that you're bringing to the table, though these are people you can interact with, it's still their testimony. And it's more so, than likely based on our, our, our hypothesis. Yeah, of course. But do, do, do you understand the concept of novel testable predictions? Still a prediction. Yeah, but do you know what it means? No, explain to me. So, so a, a really great example is when we first came up with the theories behind the um, Big Bang, right, there were a few different fields, and one of them predicted that there'd, there'd be this stuff called the cosmic microwave background radiation. There'd be this radiation left over from the Big Bang. And they, they said, okay, if this stuff exists, it's going to exist under these wavelengths with this mathematical formula, right? They had the math there. They're like, we won't be able to find it. We can't find it. It's not going to be there. They didn't even get looking for it. They just said, if this hypothesis is true, which was the, the leading one at the time, then we should be able to find it. 15 years later, there, the, there was other scientists working on another project and they couldn't get their new um, satellites to make, to, to, um, the, there was this noise that was coming in, the, the static. It's actually the same static you get when you see one of those old analog TVs that shh. That, that that's the same static and but they would see it so they, they actually changed telescopes they scrubbed the telescopes because they thought it was bird dropping and they kept getting this this background noise coming in um and eventually they realized what the noise was they, they said is it possible that it was from this this the, this paper that was written 15 years ago about the cosmic microwave background radiation so what they did is they they built um, a satellite that could go into space so there was no noise happening from Earth and they measured the cosmic microwave background radiation and they traced the data points of what they, they found and it fit exactly like point for point exactly what the maths said it should fit to now that is a wild coincidence if it wasn't a um, pr prediction so like uh, so that is like a, an incredible novel prediction so you make a prediction this is something that, that, that we, we should see if this is true. And then we do the research and we find it and we're like, holy crap. Sorry, don't mean to say that, but wow, this, is, right. this, is, this, is, this is true. Another one is Tiktaalik. We were like, there's a, there's a fossil here in this strata and there's a fossil here in this strata. There's fish thing, <clears throat> walking thing. We know there must be an intermediate on this shelf in the, in the, uh, um, in the plane of, um, of stratas, right? And they go, where is the strata showing in the top of the land? And, they, and it was this one really remote spot in Canada that they went to. And they said, we should find an intermediate fossil between this thing and this thing at that location. They flew there. They spent three years doing huge expeditions until they found Tiktaalik, which was a perfect um, intermediate species between one and another. So for that to be, for them to find a fossil like that and then find many others, like and many other teams find them after they found this one, would be extraordinary for, for the theory of evolution not to um, be accurate in that, in that account, right? It would be just, it'd be, it, 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 it boggles the mind at how, how novel these predictions can be and for them to, when we test them, they, they're accurate. And that's, so, okay. but hear what you're saying, though, because um, you won't say, well... find another group. Yeah, I get that. But then you'll find another group of scientists that disagree. They won't disagree with that, okay, or with many points that you brought to the equation. Because remember, I mean, evolution as a, as a concept, as, as if you were to even believe it, I mean, there's not just one evolution. We've moved on from what Darwinism was now. I mean, we, I mean what we have, I mean, we have Lamarckism, we have Darwinism, we have mutation theory, neo-Darwinism, modern concept of synthetic theory, uh, catastrophism, vitalism, uh, structuralism, uh, mutationism, genetic drift. You know, there's not, yeah, there are but, many different models. So, and they don't agree on them. Those things you just said then weren't competing theories with the, the theory of evolution by natural selection. They were different words for components of the theory of evolution. No, they're different models. Like the genetic, is genetic, drift, Darwinism. genetic drift isn't a model um, in competition with the theory of evolution by natural selection. Genetic drift is is how um, genetics drift over time within certain populations of species. It's just one part of the the, the actual theory. But is everyone agreeing? No, there's always outliers in everything, as as there is with Islam. But what I like to do, right? So if I was if I was to if I was to go, what does the Quran say, right? I'm not going to go to like the fringe, like 
space Quran, which has like mushrooms on the front and Joe Rogan's interviewed the guy and he talks about how like Muhammad was really taking mushrooms or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go to that guy to find out what the Quran says. I'm going to go to like the majority of people, what do the majority of people and the historical evidence like point to. So when it comes to like science, I usually go to the consensus. I usually point to consensus. So I take back. Isn't that pop science? Isn't popular science the same as actual academia? So I, oh, sorry, say that again. so I know people that study, um, I don't remember what subject he was doing, but he was doing, I think, I don't remember the name of the subject matter he was doing, but he was bringing a very interesting point in that there is a big difference between what's known as sort of popularized science as opposed to what's actually taught in terms of academia. There's a great big yeah. gap between the two. Huge. Pop science is like Big Bang Theory and yeah. like this makes me feel good and quantum mechanics just discovered in parallel universe. But when you actually go to like look at the actual science, it's actually really dry, really boring. And oh, you might Lord. spend you yeah, might spend like a whole and like write a whole like book on like the shape of a butterfly, uh, shape of like a beetle's like inner wing, right? Like it's not very interesting, but it's you need right. those people. Yeah, you're quite right. But again, my brother, I mean, I want to sort of summarize because I've got to jump off soon. But my brother, yeah, right. none of this disproves the creator. And I know the way you like to uh, look at the uh, when we're talking about creator, you want to go into the theology. And that's very interesting. I like your approach. And that's a very interesting approach. But again, then you will get hit by certain stumbling blocks whereby, ooh, can this thing be possible? Hmm, could this thing be possible? So then you're then verifying it using science but again th there's nothing wrong with this but again we're then saying that there is no laws of physics or science or whatnot when a creator who has obviously made everything come to be for for that creator there are no laws he, d he can do what he wants if you can make a universe happen you can make anything happen so for yeah. me i agree for that, me that, that, yeah that for me i have to first establish if there's a creator because if, if i didn't establish that everything else i'm going to find holes in it and I'm not truly going to be able to appreciate it. I'd rather not than look into the theology. What's the point? Because every theology sort of talks about an intelligent being or whatever at the beginning. Now, if I don't subscribe to that or won't even entertain that, everything else will just, I, I don't know. I'm always, I'm always going to come to the same conclusions. And so for me, I have to first establish that first cause. If I don't establish that, none of it's going to make any it's just for me to just learn you know i learned about someone's religion and their belief huh? there's some interesting things there's some things i don't agree with but in the grand scheme of things because i've dismissed that first cause and i'm not going to get any unless i'm looking again it depends on your purpose if you're looking for answers or you're just curious to have conversations yeah and that's that's actually a big part of it but it's it goes back to what i was i'm not sure if you were here when i was saying this but like back when everyone used to believe in like the flat earth there were people who said well well we need to believe in the flat earth you know so to sail my ship across the lake or whatever um i'm i'm kind of trying to be the person that if i was back there back then at that time i'd say um no um like i don't know that the earth is flat but i know that boats float on the earth like all i know is boats float on water that i don't know that the earth is flat i don't know that you fall off the edge at the you know i've heard stories of like monsters out in the ocean i know there probably could be some things out there but i'm not sure like i'm, I'm trying to be really skeptical about this because i think the god question is the most important question a creator of the universe is would be the most important question if it was anything like the god of the bible or the quran and that's where it all, all stems down to. And I guess there are more questions. Again, for me, my brother, you know, we all have our own journey. For me, the, the moral argument, just I couldn't I couldn't move past that. And I know maybe for you, you obviously slight, have a slightly different sort of understanding. And, you know, you've got a different sort of uh, way of thinking about it. But I, I like to think maybe we, we, we touched you a bit. Because, again, I know you said that if there are two consenting people, you know, it doesn't matter what they're if they're cool with it. But I'm I'm equally intrigued in that that's not something you as an individual would entertain on a personal level. So then to yeah. you, it's obviously not right. So I think, I uh, yeah. Meat, meat. I think and so bacon, bacon really grosses me out. The smell of bacon grosses me out. I don't eat meat. It grosses me out, right? But at one time in my life, I loved it. And I understand that other people love bacon. It doesn't mean I think it's immoral. Well, actually, I do think it's probably immoral to kill a pig, but... But yeah, sorry, bad analogy. But if you want to have this conversation again, I like I get, I get that, I get that. I totally get your analogy. I totally get it. Yeah, you can jump on my YouTube. We can have a conversation again one time. This has been really interesting for me. I'd love to learn more about it. Um, from 
yeah, this has been a great conversation. So you should meet you one of much. the other brothers named E A Tower. He will you yeah, have a very great conversation with him. He's, he used to be the exact same thing, and Subhanallah, now he's um he's a Muslim, but he used to be like it was really he used to hate Islam, and he used to he was just atheist. He's just you have a good conversation with him. He's he's very he's, he's like Tower. He's, he's like Tower Studios, but on steroids, basically. To say it he's me, but on steroids. And his his approach is because the thing is, he was very hard atheist. Well, it's me. I was atheist, but I, I still had that spirituality. But him, he really, really hated theology, really hated it. And he he his arguments are just next level. So they're very, very good. We would I've been trying to get him to come on. I've been inviting him constantly, but I've not been able to get him. But yeah, next time you come on, I think you'd have a very fruitful conversation with him. Yeah, he's sure. probably he's probably asleep. He normally does his shows like late at night. It's three a.m. Yeah. for me. Yeah, three a.m. all night. For you, for like I only live an hour ahead of time from them, and for them it will be um twelve o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I. It'd be interesting to have like a, a conversation. I have, I have a YouTube channel where I have a bunch of subscribers, and it'd be interesting to have a what's discussion. Your, what's the channel? Uh, David. Uh, if you just type in David McDonald on YouTube, you'll see it. Yeah, we'll check it out, man. Thank you very much. Thanks, but it's um it, essentially um it'd be interesting to get a bunch of like, really good Muslim apologists. Uh, well, you guys essentially um, to have a conversation with some uh, some uh, some like Christians or atheists and just to have a respectful conversation between the two um, because I think I feel like a lot of people don't have these respectful conversations and I feel like people are afraid to um, not critique Islam but to um, have conversations with Muslims because uh, because of Islamic terrorism. And I think that it, you guys show that it's possible to be able to have respectful conversations and not have to, you know, re resort to... Well, um, well yeah. as it says in the Quran, and I'm not saying that you're ignorant, but this is what it says in the Quran. But I'm not saying you're ignorant, but it says, chapter 25, verse 63, it says, and the servants of the most merciful are those who walk upon the earth um, peacefully. And when the ignorant address them, they say words of peace. So that's how the, it's, that's what Islam is really about. That's um, chapter 25, verse 62. I'm not saying you're ignorant, but I'm saying no, like, I know in a sense where, I mean, if you don't, like, you, you get what I mean? Like, it's not, yeah. I'm not in the club. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, if, yeah. So we were, it says to respond with peace. That's what it says. So that's what ultimately we should be doing. It shouldn't be like, oh, I'm going to kill you because you have an opinion on it. So as long as, as long as no one is, like going like disrespecting us someone is saying oh you're a terrorist adam or you're this or muhammad was this or allah is a piece of you know because i've heard a yeah. lot of bad things as long as it's respectful and nothing transgresses anything it's fine i've got i've got my car up there and i have a my, my first muslim friend was someone i met online and i asked her i was like am i allowed to put other books on top of this book because i wasn't sure if i could even like, I was like, I don't want to offend anyone because it's the backdrop for my YouTube channel. I don't want it to be like, you know. Yeah. So, no, no, as long as you don't, like, put it on your feet. <laughs> because, um, yeah, as long as you don't put it on your feet or anything like that, yeah. Yeah, right. where, but somewhere where she lives, like, they were putting, someone had, like, cut out parts of the Quran and put into the slippers of a hotel, like, it, underneath the thing. So, yeah. people will, yeah, and it's just like, oh, geez, you must really have issues with it, Thanks. yeah. David Wood, David Wood. Um, I don't know if you know David Wood. No, so there's a, he's a really famous. He's he's a really famous YouTuber. He's a Christian. Basically, what he did with this atheist person. So it was a Christian and an atheist in the same line, which is already enough. Like they're both teaming up against Islam, which is odd, even though they contradict each other. But I know David. Wood. Did, yeah, you know him. Basically, what he did with another person named um, Apostate Prophet, basically ripped parts of the Quran and started eating it and started spitting it out or swallowing it. So, basically, that's how low they stand. Then it's it's not good. Like yeah. just right, David Wood writing eating Quran. David Wood eating Quran. You'll see it. It's pretty filthy. Yeah, I know. I I, I don't. I'm not a fan of of that. Yeah. Um, because even because like I I see where it comes from though. Um, 
Oh, I know apostate. I know apostate prophet. I, I see where it comes from though, because their perspective is like, um, like no, like, like sorry, f you. You're not going to tell me what to do. Like I've left yeah. your religion. Yeah. Um, but but what they don't understand is the is the um, is the optics of that. It just looks so bad. Like it's it's so horrible. And then they have the goal to cry about how um, YouTube is censoring them. It's like, come on, man. Like you know if you're if you're you know if you're spewing a bunch of hate to any of these groups to transgenderism um transgender groups or islam or anyone that's getting a lot of hate since 9 11 islam has been getting a lot of hate um you're gonna get shadow banned and all that stuff right but like because but subhanallah what's funny is islam grew after 9 11 actually it's surprising how islam actually grew after 9 11 even though it was hated it grew so much faster after 9 11 a lot of the people that became Muslim is only because 9-11 happened. They said, what's Islam? So they looked into it and subhanAllah yeah. ended up to the conclusion that it's the truth. And they're like, oh, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because the people that probably, would probably think, like, oh, the terrorist stuff is like, that's not a good idea. And then this is what we really believe. And they're like, oh, okay, this sounds pretty reasonable. I've actually, yeah. I have some policy because I have a Discord server and people are allowed to, there's an LGBT section, there's a uh, Islam section, Hindu section, Christian section, and we're allowed to. Everyone's allowed to critique ideas there, but as soon as someone comes on and they're homophobic, Islamophobic, transphobic, or whatever, it's, if they're if they're spewing hate for hate's purpose, then um, they get they get banned. Like so, we had these um, these uh, these I had this really horrible uh, like white supremacist come on like over and over again who used to like scream at like um, Jews in the street saying that like they genocided the German people and all this like bizarre stuff. Anyway, he sent all these like followers over and they would always post anti-Semitic memes. And I was like, yep. no, like, f like fuck off. And they're like, well, you talk about, you talk about the Hebrew Bible and like it's problems all the time. I'm like, yeah, there's, there's a way to engage. Sorry for swearing again. Sorry. There's no, a way to, fine. there's a way to engage in these conversations that that's like productive. Like you can even have conversations around transgenderism or something that's really hot or Islam or whatever. There's a way to engage with it. Um, politely um and then there's a way of just like just you know post utter piece yeah of crap. Yeah. yeah um and so i was like yeah so i just ban i ban anyone that's like that like pretty quickly but yeah um yeah nice done. talking to you man thank you very yeah, much nice talking to you, man. pleasure always having you on um would you like to say anything bridget before i go because i gotta get going with yeah um, it seems like your conversation was great. I wasn't around for much of it. I'm sorry. No. But I was the sister in the comments that said, ask any questions you want. Because um, for me, I had a lot of questions about Islam. I have a lot of Muslim friends. Um, and my brothers and sisters um, have been so open to answering any questions. And you can ask any question as long as it's respectful, um, they will answer it as to the best of their ability, or they will say, I will get back to you and I'm going to talk to a scholar and they'll come back to you with, and they actually will come back to you with an answer. So that's why I said, ask any questions you would like, because it's not disrespectful to them. It's actually very intriguing that somebody finds their religion. So like, so, it's very hard to find somebody who's, actually interested in learning about islam without being judgy because yeah. all day today we've had christians and I, i'm i used to be christian okay i'm not muslim i'm not i do not practice islam i haven't taken my shahada i just cover my hair out of respect for my brothers who are on the live um and i is so that i'm able to speak and you can see my face because i always take speaking face to face a, a bit more respectful than yeah. you know but so but i also want to be respectful but i just want to tell you how much i appreciate the kindness that i've at least seen with the conversation thus far because all day today i've seen nothing but just anger and hatred and disrespect towards my brothers and sisters who are just trying to answer questions or something like that. Um, 
you know, it's it's amazing. And I just want to say thank you, because even though I'm not Muslim, I still appreciate it when people can be respectful to others, because that's what this is all about. It's not you don't have to uh, revert to Islam or anything, but just the fact that you're polite and you're willing to ask questions. That's all that could be asked for. Well, I appreciate that it came. I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate it came across like that. I felt like sometimes I wasn't being polite, but I try my best to be polite. No, it's fine. Yeah, I do have. I do, I do have a question actually. Um, I have a friend, that Muslim friend, and um, that we've become really good friends. She lives in Malaysia um, and or Philippines, and she they can't she can't touch dogs, right? Because it's a sin in Islam to touch dogs, especially their spit. Not sin, it's just makruf. It's basically disgusting. It's not something okay. you should go in here. Um, at what stage do we stop calling the things that we have today dogs? Because if you've seen this little, like, look at this little thing here. This, yeah. it, he's, he's useless. He's, like, he's nothing like the dogs of, of, the, of the, uh, Muhammad's day. Like, he literally, yeah. we had someone stay over who, who, who had some medical marijuana, and he ate yeah. it this morning. And then got high, and we had to take him to emergency, and had to inform us that he had medical marijuana toxicity. And I was like, yeah. "Great, this thing isn't a dog; it's more like a cat." Like, so what? At what stage is it? Will it ever be like where we've where we've translated these? Like, we've changed these animals so far that they will they ever be okay to be pat or touched? Or is it? Is it? Are they always going to be seen as like the street the dog? dogs? Of a dog would be basically, yani, if you had a dog in a sense where you were a farmer and basically there were the basically, you know, those farm dogs, basically, yeah. it's fine to have. But to have a dog like that, it's still because the thing is they don't clean themselves like cats. The thing is, why is cats allowed in this summer? It's because they clean themselves. That's why cats are looked at more highly because they, after they do anything, they always lick themselves. They clean. They, that's what they do. Dogs don't really do that. Dogs just drool over the, all over the place. They love to sniff other dogs. You know, <laughs> and all these it's different like things. Like, uh, like you can't like a boy poodle. Like that's not a dog. That's like a that's like a weird ferret thing. That's like that's so far removed from the dogs of Muhammad's time. Surely, like yeah. that thing is like a rat. Like it's not. A, yeah. It's it's a like that in, it was a thing. It just it depends. It depends. It, it honestly just depends. But it's like no, I think a dog. It's if it's like haram and it's not to have a dog, it's haram. I don't know about wolves. I've heard wolves were different, but no, I think that, I think, no, not haram. Not haram. Oh wait, no, 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 no. I, I'm sorry. I'm talking to Dallas Studios in the comments as well. I'm so sorry. Is that <laughs> not, no, it's my alarm. It's the um, alarm, the fire alarm. I haven't changed the batteries. Uh, what's it called? What, what I'm saying is that, no, it's still, if it's prohibited, it would still be considered prohibited. I mean, it, it doesn't mean, you know, we turn around, we start killing dogs and smashing them and, you know, start animal cruelty is haram against us, especially pigs. Like, we're not allowed to go any pigs, but pigs have their own purpose. Why? Pigs eat everything and anything. They'll eat their own kids if they have to. So the thing is, that's why they exist as a way of basically being the natural rubbish bins, to be honest with you. And then they, all they do is they poop it out and it goes into the soil. And that's basically, that's the end of that, really. So that's why pigs were actually created, it seems like, because that's what their purpose is, not to eat them. The only time we're allowed to eat pigs is, is if we're in the middle of the desert and there's nothing else to eat, we're allowed to do that. Other than that, uh, like so for survival, we're basically allowed to do that. Other than that, it's um, yeah, prohibited. But with dogs, it's still it's we still consider a nichus, which is basically a dirty, dirty animal. And even though you clean it up and stuff, it will never be like a cat, which is very different. Like a cat is actually I mean, high regarded, unlike a dog. This is a this is problematic for a lot of people. So a lot of people that look into Islam that are dog lovers, they may see sort of something like that and go, hey. Like it's something very strange because obviously in the modern world that we live in today, a lot of people, you know, your pets are like an extension of your family to an extent, right? Yeah. So that that bond is very special. So then when you hear about this belief system that says, hey, dogs are X, Y, and Z, yeah, it can sort of be a shocker. Or if nothing else, it's like, why? But why though? Like, yeah, my dog licks me. I don't care about that. And what I'll say to that again is something, again, just to say, look, 
a dog is a creation of the creator, okay? And it's been created for a purpose as what the brother says. But if you want to have a pet, fine. Let's put that to one side. It certainly doesn't say that if a person had a dog, they're not Muslim anymore. That's not what's being said here, okay? So there are certain attributes that this creation has. But again, we that doesn't deviate from the fact that you know, we have those conversations regarding a creator, or if that exists, or if Islam makes sense. There are going to be things, a person who drinks alcohol brings the same sort of argument. Okay, in Islam, alcohol is not allowed. But, you know, we all love to have alcohol, you know, it's recreational. You know, not everyone's going to get drunk. Not everyone's going to overly excess. That's all well and good. I mean, again, but that doesn't steer away from the conversation. So, yes, the dogs do have this status, but equally, that doesn't mean we hate them or demean them or anything like that, you know? Yeah. Cool. I, I just, um, yeah, my friend, like, likes dogs but doesn't, like, she puts her slippers on and pats them through the fence with her slippers. <laughs> so, like, it's a beat. You can pat the dog. There's nothing wrong with patting it with her hand. She just washes her hands afterwards. There's, there's uh, no, yeah. Again, my brother, sometimes it's cultural things whereby some people have maybe misunderstood. Islam doesn't teach that you can't pet a dog. It, yeah. it only talks about if they lick anything, then you have to clean it in a particular manner. And that's just to promote you know, uh, a hygienic sort of way of living. And that's all it is. But you can pat a dog. There's nothing wrong with that. If she believes that, then I'd love to ask her to present her evidence where it says you can't pet a dog. But it only will say to you that if you do, just wash your hands afterwards. There's nothing wrong with paying a dog. I think it's that, a hygiene thing. It's a hygiene yeah. thing. But, but what she's doing is cultural. There's no hadith that says that you can't pet a dog. Because it says, um, yeah, because, yeah. So, sorry, I lost my but yeah it's essentially um i just don't yeah i can see how it'd be like a huge stumbling block for a lot of people um yeah yeah, yeah. i get that a lot on our stream loads of people say that hey i i like islam but why can't i can't have a dog anymore it doesn't say you can't have a dog it doesn't say you can't touch a dog it doesn't say that anywhere it just talks about well, their saliva we, and, we uh, yeah. i've had cats of, i've had three cats and each one of them has been more disgusting than my dog because it poos and wheeze and I have to clean up its poo and wee like in the kitty litter box like when my dog goes outside and I just hose it into the grass like or whatever like well actually no I don't I still have to pick it up but if we had more lawn I would it would just you just wait for the rain to wash it away but like kitty litter like the cat's just like we had this one cat that would like poo over the side of the kitty litter onto the tiles and it was like every I day I think that's the what's it uh, what's it called? I think that's a training problem. <laughs> I think yeah. it's a training problem. I think the cat was just like it would piss and then it just missed the whole thing. So I think that's the issue. But it's not it's not that it's just because even after the cat would do that and it's disgusting, obviously everything poos. Everything in anything that is alive just has to have a way to expel itself. But the thing is is that just because it expels itself and it does it in a bad manner doesn't mean it's unclean. Because remember this after the cat does its business it'll start licking everywhere like you know how flexible they are they'll start licking the downstairs and they'll start doing all these different things and just yeah. start licking dogs, itself dogs, so it's con- dogs do to each other they lick each other's private parts and they, they do bad, but to themselves go on Bridget <laughs> okay so not uh, speaking from a medical standpoint okay so I actually um have been in the medical field for about five years now. Um, something I, I didn't, I don't post, you know, talk about this on a regular basis, but something that might also help. Um, and some people in the comments, you know, I'm actually active duty military with the United States military. Um, and I work in the medical field. So two things to help a little bit. The military doesn't hate Islam. One, <laughs> even though a lot of people will say that <laughs> the military does not hate Muslims. In the United States. Okay. Yeah, that's... Two, um, um, from a medical standpoint, if you get bitten by a cat versus bitten by a dog, it is much more dangerous to get bitten by a dog because of the chance of infection. Um, so if you think of a dog's bite, now, a human bite is way worse. It's worse than the rest of them because we have way more bacteria in our mouths than any of the other ones. However, we are humans. Okay, we cannot get away from ourselves. But 
we can sit there and just like not bite ourselves right that's not mm. we don't sit there and I clean ourselves with our mouths it. right like no yeah. right but the thing is with a cat's this is where I also have a little bit of a problem with it, but at least from a medical standpoint, I can actually say that, yes, it makes sense why the saliva would be considered impure because it has so much bacteria in it and the rate of infection is crazy. You can The chance of getting rabies from a dog is exceptionally higher than getting one from a cat. Mm. Just just to put it out there right it, exceptionally higher um but um at least something that i wanted to know actually too that is, since we're on this topic why cats are not considered haram haram right if like dogs are if they dogs are, uh, what dogs are not haram Wait, I mean, you, shit. Why, why are dogs why are cats allowed? Unlike why are cats preferable than dogs? Are, is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Because yes. dogs are not. So, they're, they're not. So, they're not haram. It doesn't yeah, say. Yeah, that's can't. what I mean. That's yeah. what I mean. I I didn't mean haram, but um, yeah. why is it? Because the thing is, if a woman is pregnant, they cannot care for a a cat's litter. Because it's actually harmful for the mother and the fetus and the baby. It is actually shown to to give birth defects to the to, to the child. So the I was just is, wondering why I was why is it as well? The thing is, a cat back in the days, it's completely different. Like a cat back in the days would basically just what's it called? Go out on its own. Pee and poo wherever it has to pee and poo, and then come back. It's not like today where we have the litter box inside the house because we're afraid of our cats going outside. So it was different times back then. That's why it was allowed. Nowadays, yes, it would be more harmful, but in a sense where the mother never really has to look after the kitten back there because the kitten will just go anywhere. So in a sense, it was completely different times. But if you train your cat to go outside and we and poo, that's uh, you can do that, and that would just save you the trouble of having a fetus that turns out to be pretty bad you know so it just depends but like yeah because plus it, it, cats are, it doesn't matter the litter it's the cleaning after the pet so regardless of where they use the restroom whatever is in what like whatever wherever they go to the bathroom it's actually very harmful for a pregnant woman to handle that so even if it's in the grass even if it's in a toilet, because I've seen people train train cats yeah. to use the toilets. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, but um, I was wondering why it's not the same, like at least for pregnant women, like to to keep cats out of the home while a woman is pregnant, at least. Um, that, for me, that question is. To be honest with you, I wouldn't know the answer for it. But really, in reality, as I've said, the cat back in the days would just go anywhere and wee and poo. Like, it, the, the, the mother never had to handle the cat. I mean, the cat would just go somewhere in the middle of nowhere. It would just dig up a little hole, do its business, dig it back up, and then just come back home. So the mother never used to handle it back then. Nowadays, it's completely different because we have the little boxes inside the house, which is, for me, I think a bit stupid. It should be outside. But I think that's that's the whole thing is that it's, Let's, it's harmful for the mother. Mm -hmm. That's not I, I think that's yeah, the same. Be, but if it does cause harm, then in reality, I don't know. But the thing is, the reason why we have a cat and why it's more preferable is just because of the simple fact that it's a sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Oh, yeah, for so, sure. No, no, no. That's yeah. what I mean. I just mean as research has come out more, like yeah. so you can look it up on your computers if you feel like it i'm on my phone so i don't have my computer but yeah, no. you can research that cat feces is actually dangerous to pregnant women okay yeah. I'll have a look at it. i've never heard of that before but it's interesting it just yeah it seems like to me and this is from my perspective it seems like like because i obviously take a naturalistic perspective to 
most or all, all religions. I don't believe in the supernatural or anything. So I look at it and go, well, probably in Muhammad's time, there were probably dogs running around, biting people, people getting sick with rabies. People got sick eating pork. People got sick eating shellfish um, because of like the diseases that could easily, um, you know, uh, accreted in those, those types of food. Um, and then, you know, so that's why there were laws written about those things where cats probably weren't inside at all or probably, you know, running from little hut to hut or wherever they, the house to house. Yeah. Um, they probably weren't, it probably wasn't even, they never handled poo or anything like that. So I think that's probably why, that's what we've always taken a guess. I've got to, yeah, I've got to go. That's what I would say as well, because it was different. It wasn't like handling now. Right now, if it is going to cause harm to the baby, then it's best to stay away from it. But I think that's, at the end of the day, it's That's the just, thing is, that's what I was saying is like, how far, like surely when the Quran was written or when the Hadiths were written about dogs and their saliva, they weren't talking about a poodle, like surely. Like they were talking about whatever was running around in the desert. Yeah, whatever was running around back then, yeah. Surely, yeah, that's what they were talking about. I don't think we made that, you know, that civilised dogs. Like we don't have, an, I don't think we have rabies in Australia. So it's like, I don't even think we have those diseases in Australia. So it's like, I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I, I've actually got to go, guys, because it's like 3.30 a.m. But um, yeah, it's, it's I followed, guys, I followed Bridget, um, Delwa Studios, and I followed uh, you, Radash. Adam, just call me Adam. Call me Adam, brother. I appreciate it. It's Adam. Well, I followed you all, and it'd be great to do this again one time, maybe on my YouTube channel Love or maybe you know, here. Michael. Would love to. Would love to, inshallah, my brother. Yalla. David, take care. Be safe, and thanks for the conversation. Cool. Thanks. Thank Bye. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. You too.